All right, let's see. Hopefully everything's working fine. I just spent the whole day cleaning my damn house and cooking up a nice meal. And I like unplugged everything and dusted everything out. My PC was a little dusty. I took the glass, I took the glass fucking, you know, the glass thing off the case. And I was like, is that dust on the glass? Ooh, that's bad. And I dusted that out, took all the wires out, went in and out, everything. All the crevices. Except for like, one of the fans, because... Because I can't get all the dust out of there unless I take the whole damn thing apart. And I was like, I'm not doing that today. I'm already doing enough shit. <laughs> Fucking hopefully... I'm not sure if it was happening last, uh... Last time I streamed, but for my headphones, it kept connecting and disconnecting. So like sound would cut on and off for me, and I'm not sure if it was doing that with the microphone, and I hope it wasn't, because that would be a pain in the ass. And then, what the hell just happened? Why did the screen just go dark for like a second? What the fuck was that? Oh, my mouse hovered over it. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? But, um... Hopefully that didn't happen with my microphone, but now I fixed that issue out. For some reason, since Windows is a pain in the ass, they're like, Hey, we're gonna make it so that, uh, so that when we update shit, we're just gonna fuck up all your settings so that if we feel like you're using too many USB ports on your fucking PC that you built to use a shit ton of USB ports for, uh, we're just gonna start cutting off a of power for USB ports. You're just gonna stop doing that. So fucking the sound would come in and out. And I would cry. And why is Twitch up my ass about my own stream? Do you come here often? You should try following this channel. Of course I come here often. It's my goddamn stream. What the fuck what kind of question is that? What are you? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> Who are you people? But uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a week since uh, last streamed. I was about to say Persona. I don't know what I was gonna say Persona for. Didn't stream Persona. It's been a week since I streamed Ace Attorney. We were in the middle of a case, middle of a, middle of a cross-examination on Iris, something about snow, I forgot what it was. Something about a body, something like that. Um, and the reason I didn't stream, even though I really wanted to, was because for some reason when Father Days hit, everybody around me were like, hey, let's just party non-stop for the week. Like every fucking day. And just make it a pain in the ass for everyone involved. Let's just get drunk one night, throw up all over the place, and get drunk another night. And I'm just sitting there going like, man, I don't understand these people. Meanwhile, I live with, uh, well, I don't live with them. There's some neighbors I got that are some grade-A jackasses. Just fucking fantastic people, these people are. I swear, they just, every goddamn night, and they're fucking fireworks. Like... For the past two nights, they've been setting off like this firework that creates a fucking sonic boom for some reason. Shakes my damn house. Makes my dogs go crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> There's been that. But, we're back now. We're here. We're gonna play some goddamn Phoenix Wright. Don't know how far we're gonna get. And who knows? I was struggling last time. Maybe, uh, maybe a week's break is what I needed. Right? So, where the fuck... <laughs> I'm gonna assume... I'm gonna assume 4 is where I left off at. Do I wanna load this? Of course I do. Part 4. Alright. So what the hell were we doing? What were we in the middle of? That doesn't make any sense if you stack it up against the other evidence. What evidence, Phoenix? Your Honor! I like that statement I am... I miss? <laughs> I like that statement Iris just made. Add it to the testimony. But, does it have something to do with the case? All will be made clear if you allow her statement to be added to the record. Ha! Huh. This should be fun. Time to guzzle that sweet liquid down your throat. <laughs> We're already starting with the innuendos. Alright. <clears throat> you, let's get this snow business cleared up, shall we? Yes, sir. Alright, something about snow? Uh, that's the last statement. I just want to go over what the fuck was happening. Let's see. 
Um, man, that's a lot to look through. Okay, after Mystic Elise died, I called out Mystic Maya. I thought it was my duty to protect the future master of the Korean tradition. So I removed the body from the inner temple by myself. I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. Then I used the snowmobile to carry it back to... What? I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. Then I used the snowmobile to carry it back to the Hoskura Temple. And I used the sword at the altar. Huh? Okay. So, what do I have? I have the map of the area. That dot, I believe, is where they found the orb. Buried in the snow. I remember thinking that the orb would help me. But it didn't. Misty fade image. Okay, a picture of Misty. I uh, received before. Weather data. Data, data. Snow with occasional lightning strikes. Snow, 7 to approximately... 1050, lightning, 10 to 11. Lightning struck Dusky Bridge at 1045, around 30 minutes passed between the fire starting and going out. Okay. Wait. Wait, what? Around 30 minutes passed between the fire starting and going out. But it started late. Okay, so. All right. Sword with the blood on it. Staff. It's a sword. It's a cane sword. That's cool. The autopsy. Body fell 10 feet after death. Still, still don't know what that's about. Still don't know what that's about. Tracks. Some footprints in there. No one has ever said anything about the footprints, if I recall. A crime photo. The evidence on that shows that there was snow. Snow on the body. Well, the snow wasn't on the body. The sketch that gives me nightmares. That's cool. Um, crystal spear, master talisman, the letter that Morgan wrote to Pearl. The murder weapon. And the pillar with Maya's name, supposedly Maya's name written on it. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to have everything come back to me while we do this. Uh, I'm sorry, how old are you? 32. 48. Oh my god, you're reaching middle age, woman. Yeah. Oh my god, and Elise was almost middle age. She was a year older? Wow. 25. 25. Are we all the same age? Oh, Phoenix doesn't have a profile on himself? What a bitch. Miles had one. Well, 26, so Miles is older than him. I'm assuming he's older than Phoenix. Maybe he's the same age as Phoenix. Dahlia, deceased. Fucking demon. Possessing bodies and shit. And Morgan, we don't know what her age is. Timeless. Timeless she is. And our bronze beauty, of course. With the fucking flaming whip. 19. That's the, yep, that's the built of a 19 year old. God damn what the fuck are they feeding you in Germany? That ain't right. Whatever they're feeding her in Germany ain't stacking up to what we're getting here in a, in, you know, fucking America slash Japan. Cause Maya's just, Maya, you gotta grow up a little bit more. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right. So, Something about snow that Gadot said before. So I'm gonna press this. The snowmobile. I knew that it would show up sooner or later. Yes, I had the key. Use the snowmobile to travel from Hasguro Temple to Dusky Bridge. Okay. That part was... That part... Wait, what? This is the part that was in question the other day. Should I ask more details? About the snowmobile. Let me hear more about the snowmobile. Well, it was very cold that night, so I rode it all the way for the bridge. I'm sorry, witness. But now, I've got a problem with your testimony. Okay. Excuse me? Hey, Dot. What are you up to? That night, after the head nun left the remainder of you... Oh, wow. 
can't read already. Oh, hey, Greg, how's it going? <laughs> oh, shit. S fucking shit starts happening. All right. She walked from the inner temple back to Hazakura Temple. Oh, yeah, why won't she use a snowmobile? Yes, I'm fairly certain that that's what the record indicates. Let's recall her comments on the subject. Maybe, but when I made it back to Hazakura Temple, it was there, by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. The snowmobile was in front of the main gate. This is one of those contradictions, wouldn't you say? Damn, good dot. You fucking attacked her like that? Oh, my mic just cut out? For real? Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Definitely see. Definitely just saw that. What the fuck is that about? Um. See. This is what I was afraid of. All right, let's see. Device manager. Um, da -da -da -da. Do -do -do. I'm gonna head to my USB port. Maybe that's why this shit's going crazy. What the fuck was that? Is there a moth in my room or was that dust? Um, that seems fine. Power management, that seems fine. Power management here, that's fine. I'm not seeing anything with my with my USB. Hmm. I don't think my ports are acting up. They all seem to be doing fine. Maybe it was just a micro maybe it was just a little little slit mishap. If it happens again, please let me know. Maybe I gotta get a new wire or something for the mic. But let us continue. Order! Mr. Gadot! Why are you pointing out contradictions in the witness's testimony? Let's just say I like things to be neat and tidy, okay? Um, well, maybe. Sister Bikini missed it. Yes, maybe she didn't see it. You think she missed it? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> whatever. Even I don't think this is this, this is decisive enough to warrant any more time or effort. It's just, you better be careful in your testimony. That's all I wanted to say. A smart little cookie like you shouldn't have any trouble understanding that. Yes, sir. What was that all about? Why would Gadot want to give me a hint? Why would you do that? Why are you so... Why are you so crazy? Very well then. Let's continue with the testimony. So you transported the body by the snowmobile. All the way to Hazakura Temple Courtyard. Yes. I thought that's why Mystic Maya... I thought that's why? I thought that way Mystic Maya would never be suspected. That's what I thought anyways. And then I... And then I stabbed the body. With the sword. Okay. Did anything get added there? I dragged it to me all the way across the booth. I dragged it behind me all the way across the bridge. So I removed the body from the inner temple by myself. Okay. Then you used the snowmobile to carry it back. What was the time of this? When was the murder? Can I get ev what? When did the body get killed? From 10 to 11. Loss of blood, stabbed. Weather report. Lightning, 10 to 11. What? <laughs> You're not making sense to me. Okay. Then I use snowmobile to carry it back. That would be that would be impossible to do with no snow, ma'am. 
Your Honor, what do you think about this witness statement? The fuck? Hmm. Okay. Well, nice to know. <laughs> well, nice to know! I'm calling bullshit on this. Alright, then what about... What about here? Would you carry a body through... Through thunder and lightning? You claim that the snow had already stopped when the murder occurred. She did? But I'm sorry, Iris. That just isn't possible. What? This is the weather data from the night of the murder. According to this, the snow stopped... The snow didn't stop until 10.50pm. But you couldn't have crossed Dusky Bridge at that time. Wait, does it say the snow didn't stop till 10th? Wait, what? Let me see. Snow, da da da, lightning, lightning struck. Around 30 minutes passed between the fire starting and going out. I mean. I mean. It says it in like the most vague way possible. Oh, it says, never mind. It actually says approximately. Well, there it is. See, what really confuses me on this is that it's like, so at some point there was snow and lightning at the same time. That bothers me. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that bothers me. That confused me. Why you say that? Because five minutes before the snow stopped, Dusky Bridge was struck by lightning and had caught on fire. What did you say? That bridge, it was on fire? You don't mean to say. You didn't know about it? It was because of the lightning strike that the bridge burnt down. What? But it can't be! It looks like you still haven't figured it out. No matter how hard you try to deceive or conceal the truth, you can't pull the wool over the eyes of a real defense attorney. Oh, come on. Go easy on her. She's acting a tad bit weird. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know why, but for some reason, listen, I'm still going with my demon theory, even though we know her, the demon is her sister. But now, my mind is being a little stupid now. I'm having a little fun theory on the side. What if at some point, they switch places? That'd be fucked up. That'd be fucked up that Iris is the one who's actually dead, and fucking Dahlia's right here. The bridge was already on fire. Then an incident took place. That's right, the inner temple was already totally cut off from the outside world. There's no way you could have crossed the bridge. Body or no body. What is this, Kingdom Hearts? Witness, even my patience has limits. Any further lying and I will find you in contempt of court. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh fuck no? What do you mean oh fuck no? Oh don't tell, no. <laughs> They didn't switch places. Because me, because earlier in the case, I went like, well, unless they got separated at birth or some shit, and then it's like, yeah, the dad just gave one away. It's like, what? <laughs> she gave the wrong one away. <laughs> like, what? While she was in jail, she's like, my name's not Dahlia. The only person, <laughs> the only person here that is truly contemptible is you. Old man. Why? Me? How dare you? Whether this witness lied or not doesn't mean squat right now. Squat? The important thing now is to find out the truth, isn't that right? Yes, of course, but... Whether it was snowing or not snowing, or whether the bridge was burning or not, there are two facts that can't be disputed. First, the body of Elise was discovered in the Hanskura Temple Courtyard. And the second, the head of the nun, Sister Bikini, Witness Iris desecrating Elise's body. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> That's what you mean. Oh, man. I really hope. Oh, God. That would hurt me. I don't know why it would hurt me. Because it would just mean that Elise was super evil, too. Well. Well, con well, assuming that the one in front of us is super evil as well. But come on. 
They both can't be bad eggs. <laughs> please, please God, no. Have one be good at least. Give me hope. <laughs> you made a good point on both accounts. That's right. I'm not lying. What are you claiming this time? I wasn't myself at, at all that night. So many memory is still somewhat hazy. So many memory. So my, so my memory is still somewhat hazy. There I go, adding words again. You have stood at the witness stand and testified this entire time. Are you telling us now that your memory of that night is hazy? It's only human to err. <laughs> if you to err, uh, he just had like a stroke for a moment. Oh, hey, Breezy, how's it going? Hope everything's wonderful with the both of you. If you're so perfect, Trite, maybe you can explain this for the court. What is it? When the murder happened, the bridge had already burnt down. But somehow the body traveled across the bridge and was found in the temple courtyard. Perhaps you have some kind of perfect explanation for this magic trick. Obviously, they had a fucking catapult on the other side and they perfectly aimed that bitch. <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. That would be metal as shit. Good, thanks. Playing some Deep Rock Galactica. Oh, God. <laughs> Iris has a jetpack. That'd be, that'd be pretty sweet. If she had a jetpack, she could have been gone for the cost. She could just tuck away. I know there must be some way she got across the burnt out bridge. But unless I can somehow demonstrate it, we'll never know the truth. It looks like the defense is not prepared to offer a suitable explanation. Now you gotta jump. Fucking her with a jetpack just going, hasta la vista, bitches. Just flying away. See what I mean? In other words, you're in no position to suggest that this lady's testimony isn't the truth. What the fuck, Dot? Alright then, witness. Let's hear your testimony once more. About that, Your Honor. You admitted that you moved the victim's body. Nevertheless, your prior testimony contained a rather large inconsistency. Please add an explanation for that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. That fucking... I'm at, I'm at a point where I don't know if this smile is genuine or just pure evil. God, give me hope, please. Well, will this be her final testimony? Her grand final? And the fucking Bowser's Inside Story music starts playing? Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. Oh, what the fuck? I looked away. <laughs> also drew the reggae gumshoe from last time. Oh my god, did you really? Please send that to me. I would love to see it. Put that up on my wall, and then people are going to walk in and be like, Who the fuck is this guy? And be like, oh, you don't know him? That's fucking, that's reggae gumshoe. And they're going to say, what the fuck is a gumshoe? <laughs> Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. Made an attempt. Hey, an attempt is better than nothing. So I must have just gotten confused, I guess. Was the snow still falling or had it stopped? Doesn't it really does it really matter that much? Or are you saying that there is a way to cross a burning bridge? What are you doing, Iris? Why are you so evil? Is her Bro, that'd be some crazy shit right now if right now, this very moment, her twin sister was taking over her body. That'd be some craziness. She's really, she's really laying it on thick. Like, really just being a pain in the ass a little bit right now. <laughs> so it was just a misunderstanding, I see. Same here, can't decide whether the fire in her eyes is a mirror of hell or just smoothing flames. Oh, God. You can send it through a whisper or a different way. Uh, you can, you can direct it to me through a tw uh, Twitter. My DMs are always open for everyone, even the people who hate me. This is a photo of Dusky Bridge after it burned down from the lightning blast. It was taking on the morning after the incident. Man, that shit looks bad. It certainly was burnt to a crisp, and one of the suspension wires even snapped. It's amazing the whole bridge didn't fall. That shit is crispy. <laughs> It is. I mean, what are you gonna tell me? You're gonna tell me she type fucking tight roped across? <laughs> Clearly it would be impossible to carry a corpse across the bridge in this condition. Okay. 
unless I do something to discredit this testimony. All right. Well, I mean, hey, in the picture that Larry gave us, she didn't go across the bridge. She just simply flew over that bitch, Superman style. It's gonna be deemed, this is gonna be deemed as the truth. Maya will be accused of murder. That's right. I'm only gonna say this one more time. Oh. It is only human to err. And only humans can spot the errors of our ways. The more sense he makes, the less sense he makes. What a guy. <laughs> okay. In the middle of packing. Oh shit. Wow. I shoulda I should have been moved to like a different location a couple of months ago, but people around me are acting too goofy for that. <laughs> Let's see. Take it back. I was just the chat in the courtroom. <laughs> Why? All right, you fucking evil demon. What am I looking at? You know what? You know what? You know why I can't trust her completely? And it's not just cause her cadence and stuff. It's cause she reminds me. And the reason she reminds me, especially cause I replayed it recently cause it had the PS5 version come out. She reminds me of Sephiroth. She reminds me of Sephiroth whenever he looks at Cloud with his fucking cat eyes. And he's like, Cloud, come to me. <laughs> like, she reminds me exactly of Sephiroth. Like, I don't trust her at all. <laughs> all right. Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. So it must have just gotten confused, I guess. Was the snow still falling? Or had it stopped? Does it really matter that much? Or are you saying that there is a way to cross Burton Bridge? All right, well, I keep saving my shit, but I have, like, no health. All right. Maybe because she tight roped over the burning bridge with the body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Her pure muscle that she has. Like, under that claw, she just has, like, just super ripped. That'd be awesome. She's basically, she's basically Kefla. <laughs> she's basically Kefla. All right. Well, I'm gonna attack that with this, cause I mean, you're basically flying over the fucking bridge. <laughs> That's not big dick energy, I don't know what is. Oh god, I was right? Oh no! A dead body flying over a burning bridge. Oh my fucking god. I wouldn't exactly rule that out of the possibilities. What? Masaka. You're saying it's possible? Don't make me laugh. The only thing that's possible about your claim is that it's been pulled out of thin air. I don't know about that. In any case, we have a witness who did see it happen. Preposterous! In prison, everyone builds muscles. <laughs> oh, why is it not letting... Oh, really? Let me see. Let me check my Twitter real quick. Because my stuff, I always leave my stuff open for everyone. Should be. Where the fuck? Settings. No messages. Allow message requests from everyone. Should be, should be able to do it. All right, who is it? Who is this witness? I can't chicken out here. I gotta keep on. I gotta keep on the attacking. Go go go. And Sheena go go baby. Miss Elise, brilliant and highly gifted apprentice, Lawrence. <laughs> brilliant, highly gifted apprentice. Remember what he said in his testimony. Huh. 
might be on your end since you barely use Twitter. I barely use Twitter as it is, too. I don't use social media that much. I'm not hip with the times, I guess. That night, he was at the Mount at the Mountain Shack, Heavenly Hall. And that's when he witnessed the event. I think you've all seen this sketch before. The stuff of nightmares, truly. It's an exact drawing of what he witnessed that night. Are you serious? Today's not April Fool's Day, is it? Mr. Wright, are you seriously claiming that the victim flew through thin air? I mean, you're not saying you're not saying today's April Fool's, but I see a courtroom full of fucking clowns. So you work with me here. And you're using this pathetic scribble to support your argument. Uh-oh, the judge looks like he's about to blow a gasket. <laughs> well, Trey, there's nowhere for you to hide now. Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old, does this get... Excuse me, motherfucker, six-year-olds do not draw that good. Most six-year-olds nowadays, especially, they're just stuck on their old phones, fucking pressing, pressing the screen and shit. All their hooting and hollering and hipping and hopping. They're jipping and jopping. And they don't know what the jazz is all about. You see? <laughs> Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old, the sketch doesn't prove anything. Yes, I'm pretty sure it does. I'm gonna prove it. Listen, I know your tricks. You're trying to turn this whole thing upside down. If you're so eager to turn the case upside down, why not start with the sketch? Upside down. Why did Godot say... Can I look at that again? Where's the sketch? I'm trying to... I'm really trying to wrap my head around this. Did fucking Larry draw this upside down? Can I see, can I see a picture of the bridge, please? Son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Godot's good, but why is he helping us? I don't know, because he's looking at her, he's like, I don't know, that family murdered my girlfriend or some shit. Well, they didn't murder her, but you know, it's some vendetta shit going on there. All right. Uh, if there is actually useful, it'll just end right here and now. <laughs> you forgot the ad symbol. <laughs> All right, did it go through? I'll leave it open. There you go. All right. Motherfucker. Why did Godot say that? Why did, why did he do that? All right, then. Let's hear the defense theory. Well, I got one shot to prove. That is upside down. So what does she do? Does she tie, like, a rope and just swing across? Fucking, like, solid snake style? Like, what, what are we doing here? What exactly is the sketch trying to show? I don't think old Whiskerface is gonna forgive me. Uh, gonna for forgive any more mistakes. Alright, Phoenix. Look carefully. The sketch drawn by Lawrence. Evidence of nothing. Complete contradiction. Exactly what happened. Of course the victim was flying through the air. You can see it right there in the sketch. Whoosh. I don't think that I don't think that's what I was supposed to do. You know. She's starting to remind me of yesterday's witness. What? That was the last thing I wanted to hear. Do you have any evidence that the victim flew through the air? Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying flew through motherfucker. You haven't discovered a giant human catapult in the inner- See, that's what I said. I wish they had. Even if you're a lousy lawyer, at least- At least you're one cup worth of entertainment. I think we should skip the penalty this time. You son of a bitch. Must be some way. There must be some way to use Larry's sketch. Show the truth of what happened. Alright then. The witness will now return to her testimony. Yes, Your Honor.
Huh? <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Okay. All right. Oh, it went through now. Let me see. Because I really do want to see Rega. Rega ass fucking. I don't know. What's his face? Gun shit. What do you mean attempt? What do you mean attempt? This is great. Oh my god. <laughs> it's giving me like total drama island feelings. Uh, no motive, no crime. I fucking love this. Oh man. That makes me happy. He's playing a fucking Congo drum. I love it. That put a smile on my face there. That's exactly what I needed to see. Alright. Uh, back to the fire and the flames. And the lady screaming my name, hey. Alright, let's see. Evidence of nothing. It's a complete contradiction. Like itself? Something's obviously funny about the sketch. I'm no art critic, but even I can see that. No, 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 that's not what I mean, Your Honor. Lawrence stated it over and over, that this sketch was exactly as he saw it. However, if we're to believe his testimony, then the sketch contradicts reality as we know it. It contradicts reality. Huh, this is getting interesting. Looks like you're back to that finger-pointing thing again. Okay, Trite. So what exactly contradicts reality as we know it? Uh, I'm gonna say maybe it's these? I mean, it's obvious to be like the flying body. But these are the supports. Oh, I only get like one bar of penalty? Okay, well, why not just go for it then? Fuck it. This, the wire connecting the bridge. The wire? Huh. Is that thing that contradicts reality? It is indeed. They show us the reality it supposedly conflicts with. Show us something that will point out how the sketch contradicts reality. I'm gonna use your fucking photo that you gave me, you son of a bitch. Because the supports are on the bottom. Well, it's not even on the bottom, it's fucking flipped to its side. And it's just dangling. <laughs> That's her cannon name now? What's her cannon name? Did I say something? Photo of Dusky Bridge, correct? Yes. Now compare the sketch and the photo for a minute. In this sketch, the wires appear to be above the guard wires. But on the actual Dusky Bridge, jumping ju- what the fuck? I don't even know what the hell I- I- what? <laughs> the wires are below the guard wires. Order! The sketch is somewhat different than what depicted in the photo. However, isn't it likely that the artist just saw it wrong? Or perhaps he drew it wrong? Either way, it sounds like you're just wrong. Wow, guys, thanks for the vote of confidence. Would someone like... By the way, again, Iris, I'm helping your ass out here. Fucking pipe down. <laughs> With someone like Lawrence, I admit a mistake is definitely possible. But then, that begs the question. Why did he make a mistake? What was the reason? Are you saying you know the answer to that? You're damn right I do. Listen, think back, all right? Remember what Lawrence was doing when the witness, when he witnessed this event? He was at Heavenly Hall waiting for, waiting for a lover that was never gonna come. 
lonely little bastard. He waited and waited, and finally he laid down. <laughs> Iris, th <laughs> Iris Thundercock. Because a girl is above the human species. <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. But then lightning shoots from the sky and sets the bridge aflame. Now ponder what sort of position Lawrence must have been at the time. He was lying on his back, which is why he remembered the scene the way he did. He was lying on his back? I can't see how it relates. But it does. That's the reason why the wires in the sketch go up instead of down. No way. Lawrence witnessed the event while he was laying on his back, faced up. In other words, the scene that he saw was actually upside down. So then, the sketch should actually... I think you finally get it, Your Honor. The correct way to view Lawrence's sketch is like this. This is how it should actually look. The victim's body wasn't flying above the bridge. It was actually swinging below. That's right, just like the pendulum. Order. Of all the things to say, a pendulum? The bridge was spreading to a crisp. There was no way to get across it. But if the body had been found at the inner temple, it would have caused problems. This is, this is where the criminal decided to take a gamble. They used the burning bridge to get the body across to the other side. And a, pigeon, and a pendulum was the only way to get it done. Let's think about this for a minute, shall we? Dusky Bridge is about 20 yards long, which means it's about that far... Wait, what? It's about that far from the inner temple to the opposite cliff. Yes, that sounds right. In order to cover that distance with a pendulum, you need a rope at at least 10 yards long. That's, oh, that's where the body fell. <laughs> to get a rope that long, you have to plan ahead. The lightning strike that night can only have been an accident. Oh, shit. By the way, can I just say I really love this soundtrack? When shit starts getting heated. So, you know what? Just take this soundtrack that's playing right now, throw it in a Mega Man stage. It'll rival Wily's castle any day. So it doesn't make sense that the culprit would have prepared the rope beforehand. So then... They didn't have to get the rope ready. The rope was already right in front of them. What? I'm saying that it was just as a matter of us using what was already there. In that case, Mr. Wright, please give us an explanation to support your theory. What makes you think the criminal had the rope on hand to create a pendulum? Uh, I don't know. Not the talisman, I don't think. Had the rope on hand. The fuck? <laughs> I mean, would it be the bridge itself? It, it's dangling right there near a cliff edge. You just have to walk down and reach out to it. Possibly with the cane. Right? I'm gonna... I'm gonna fucking... I'm gonna kill myself with this. And the meaning of this is... If you want to know where the rope came from... It's hanging right there in front of your glorious beard. Oh, my beard! This... This is one of the wires from the bridge. When the lightning struck the bridge and set it on fire... One of the suspension wires came loose from its anchor. The criminal didn't have any time to waste, so they tied the wire around Elise's body. Fucking hell. Just whomp! <laughs> Just fucking tossed it over there! Oh man. Uh, it didn't break. <laughs> was the one who... Wait, what? It didn't break, she was the one who untied it.
think that's what he was going for? What do you mean? Okay, yeah, I can see. Yeah, I can see that. Because there was simply no other way to move the body. You okay, Gadot? You alright? Breathe, man! Breathe! Mr. Gadot! Oh my god, he's still going. That man. Oh! What that fucking throat do? <laughs> Jesus. It seems that Mr. Gadot is more focused on his coffee than answering my question. He's frowning in black magic. Soon he's, being, soon he's gonna become the fucking witch doctor from Princess and the Frog. It seems like the odds of the rope being readily available were very high. So I suppose it's not an impossibility after all. Possible or impossible? That's not the question we need to ask. There's only one question. Did that really happen? I mean, it's kind of the same question. Try it. I wonder if you can prove what, what happened for us. Do you have any actual evidence that the body was swung over the pendulum? I do. Look at the autopsy, you son of a bitch. Before I present my evidence, let me review what we know so far. According to this photo, one of the wires snapped. Looking at the map, we can see it's the one that was in front of the inner temple. So then, that was the spot where the criminal... Yes, precisely. Now let us consider the body's movements by looking at the overhead map again. If the body was pushed from this point here, it would drop on the opposite blank... On the what? On the opposite bank... Blank. On the opposite bank of the approx approximately at this point. Did you say drop? Well, they must have failed to catch the body on the other bank. Bank. Bank blank. Ugh. I don't know why that... Ugh. That ruins my flow. <laughs> what? What makes you think something like that happened? Because I have evidence that suggests her body dropped some distance. What kind of evidence? Take a look at this. The autopsy report. It says here that her body fell about 10 feet after her death. 10 feet, huh? That's most likely the height difference between the two sides. The body overswung due to forward momentum, but then came loose and fell about 10 feet. And then as a result of the landing impact, this crystal spear was knocked loose. That's... Yes. This blood-stained amethyst crystal. It's the one that came off Miss Elisa's staff. And even more important, is the place where this crystal spear was found. Indeed. I believe it already marked on the, on the overhead map. The crystal was found. Huh. Precisely, Your Honor. In that very spot where the pendulum would arrived, if given the right amount of speed. Uh, fuck. <laughs> I got distracted for a bit, my bad. This explains your theory quite well, Mr. Wright. You have provided us with the way- th wait, what? We have? You have provided us with the way the body could have been moved that, li that night. Eh. Can't speak. An impressive deduction, Mr. Wright. Most impressive. What the fuck? Come on! I thought this cold coffee might help you cool down. You can't make you can't make cold brew that fast, you liar. It's hot as hell. What's the meaning of this, Godot? That was a dark and bitter guess that you made, try it. But you forgot about one thing. Oh? What would that be? The aroma. Huh? The fuck are you talking about? A coffee most reliable a most reliable accomplice is this deep and profound aroma. Uh the rest of the court doesn't speak coffee <laughs> coffeeness. Can you elaborate a bit more? If the criminal had sent the body to the other side, like you said. And naturally, there must have been an accomplice lying in wait to catch it. An accomplice? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Brit. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 
Pearl, what did you do? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Bridge. So who collected the body? What do you have to say about that, right? Mr. Gradat is correct. This can't be the work of a single person. See, I'm gonna be honest, I was thinking that in my head. I was like, I was like, how are you gonna swing the body over and catch it if you're not over on the other side? Right? But you know what? I was like, video game logic, I'm gonna let it rest. Didn't think they would actually actually point that out. Well, Mr. Wright, you know what you must do. Yes, Your Honor. The body couldn't have been made in Husker Temple with the... Oh. The body couldn't have made its cause... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Could have made it to Temple without an accomplice. Did Pearls kill her? I don't know, man. I mean, it wouldn't be Pearls per se. Is my fucking shit cutting in and out again? What the hell's going on here? Oh, God, I gotta figure out this shit at some point. Um... I mean, technically it was Pearl, but at the same time, no, because she was, uh, uh, Dahlia was in her body, and possessing her, because her mom told her to do it. Very well then, if you please, Mr. Wright. Who was the person that received the body? Wait, who was the person that received the body on the other side? Okay. Well, the person that received it, obviously, that would be Iris. It can only be you, Sister Iris. Huh? Huh? But I... I don't see why you're so surprised. The only way to transport the body from Dusky Bridge is by a snowmobile. But with her back, with her achy break it back, Sister Bikini could never pick a butt like that. Well, the one that could have managed it your swole ass arms. Are they about to make a nine-year-old kill? This game's awesome. I know it is. They made a fucking, I mean, uh, they, they did the thing. Was it, was it this game or was it last game? Which one had eeny meeny? That was the last game, right? Yeah, that was the last game. Fucking, uh, they had Maya kill someone while she was, while she was, uh, fucking, you know, doing her ooky spookies. I think that's what happened. Well, she didn't do the killing. It was actually the other two, but they made it look like she did the killing. Anyways, that's right. Were you even listening to the witness's testimony? On the night of the crime, this little cutie pie, don't you dare butter her up, you son of a bitch. Only I can do that. Was on cleanup duty in the inner garden temple after the mother-daughter bloodbath. I haven't forgotten about, uh, I haven't forgotten, but have you, Mr. Gadot? This witness also, also seen a Husker temple. Just creating the corpse of the victim. Hmm. Strange indeed. It's almost as if, on that night, the defendant was in two different places at the same time. Sister Iris, let me ask you something. Why didn't you mention it when you first gave your testimony? Mention what? The pendulum, of course. Using the sketch drawn by an eyewitness, I have established how the body was smoothed using burnt out bridge. Which means, it's now a fact that this occurred. Something you should have already known. No, I had no idea. I didn't know anything about the pendulum. But I don't know you're sitting here confessing to the... Uh, the come on! But the body couldn't have been passed along to the other side without your help. So, you should have known about it. In fact, it'd be impossible for you to be clueless about the whole thing. Unless you're not really Iris to begin with. Oh no! You can't! You can't do this! No! You gotta stop! What? How can you say that, Mr. Wright? You gotta stop. Stop. You can't go down this road. You can't do it. You can't send another beautiful face, the same beautiful face, back in the slammer twice. What kind of nonsense is this? You're saying the witness isn't Iris? <laughs> Are 
Are you serious? That's right. I mean, she could be, I mean, Iris could be Iris, but at this moment in time, she could be someone else. Inner demons, baby. This woman is... There's no one besides Iris that could have received the corpse that night. Now I get it. Now I know why I've been sick to my stomach this whole trial. Why her whole demeanor changed so suddenly from yesterday. And why she's trying to pin this murder on, on Maya. The woman that's standing there at the witness stand. Her real name is... Lady Demitresk. <laughs> You demon! She devil be gone! I never thought I have I never thought I'd have to utter your name again. Voldemort. Let alone see you. It's been a long time. Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, what's uh what's the matter? Ghost cat got your tongue, bitch? Sister Iris had a twin sister. And you're looking at her, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. That name rings some bells. Distant bells. Bells nonetheless. <laughs> it's just your imagination, Gramps. This file contains all the relevant data about Talia Hawthorne. <laughs> right, hope you're not bullshitting, because I'm gonna put you through the ringer. Oh yes, I remember now. That case, five years ago. My name's Talia Hawthorne. I just want to say, oh, I just want to say I'm a beautiful Southern Belle. <laughs> it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor's all mine. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like how he's touching his hair. That's really creepy. No, the honor's all mine. But according to this, Dahlia Hawthorne is already dead. It says her... Hmm. My bad, I'm sorry. I had to yawn. It says her ex her execution was carried out last month. So what? Death has no meaning in this courtroom. What? Ooh, what? Order. Wait a moment. How can you? My sister, she's already dead. Stop it, he's already dead. What kind of... Oh, don't you give me that bullshit. Uh-uh, no, I'm not having it. You all people should already understand, after all. The blood of the master of the curing channeling technique flows within your body. The curing channeling technique? Now, where have I heard that? That's right. You're not Dahlia Hawthorne herself. You're the spirit of Dahlia currently inhabiting the body of the spirit medium. You fucking evil devil, you. You she-devil! Demon! Be gone! <laughs> uh, you're damn right I knew this would happen. You're damn right I knew it. I said it from the beginning. I said, what if there was a ooky spooky demon? I'm a fucking genius. That's what happened. You can't pull one over my eyes except for all the times that you did. What an exciting story. Exciting. Quite impossible. You're asking us to buy that Dahlia Hawthorne just happened to be channeled by someone. On the very night of the murder. Wait, hold up. So, I'm gonna say. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm having a little bit of an issue here. Are you telling me that. How. How fast. How fast can you. Can the spirit travel between two different mediums? Because if. If fucking, uh, whatchamacallit, if Iris is on the other side, and I'm assuming Pearl was the other one who fucking summoned, summoned the spirit, I mean, Pearl would have to be on the other side doing the murder, and then swing it over there, and then Iris, without the spirit in her, would be the one to catch it. Unless, in mid-swing somehow, she was able to just fucking swoop through between the bodies. But then Pearl would fucking wake up in the snow instead of inside the temple. Talking about Kadad, but I guessed it too. Oh, I guessed it before Kadad even showed up for this case. Fucking spooky spooky shit. 
On the very night of the murder, to the temple where her twin- Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> On the very night of the murder, to a temple where her twin sister Iris was. Well, if you're gonna put things that way, then yes. You're supposed to believe a coincidence like that just happens? Naturally, it was no coincidence. The whole thing... The whole thing was part of a plan from the very beginning. It's all written here, in these instructions. <laughs> What's that? These instructions were written by your mother, Morgan Fay. And part of the plan called for Dolly Hawthorne to be channeled. That night. There were two irises at Hazakura Temple. Two of them? Even the time of the channeling was planned out. As soon as you hear the lights out bell. In other words, 10 p.m. However, Iris was seen before dinner time. That means the Iris that was at that was at dinner was the real Iris. And the Iris who gave me the hood in the main hall was also the real Iris. Meaning that the Iris Sister Bikini saw at the Inner Temple was someone else dressed as her, namely one Dolly Hawthorne. Do you even know? <laughs> you even know what you're saying, Trite? This whole channeling the spirit of Dolly Hawthorne business? Yes, it's true that you found plans that talk about it. However, there's one thing that's perfectly clear. The witness currently standing in the witness stand is the real Iris. Eh? What? <laughs> the whole case was spooky, of course. It is. Calm down and remember what you know about the night of the crime. After meeting Sister Bikini, the Dahlia Hawthorne that's been, uh, that had been channeled, have been, have been stranded at the Inner Temple due to the lightning strikes. It was later that the body was moved by Pendulum. That's right. Naturally, that would mean that the Iris that received the body was the real Iris. Are you with me so far? Yes, that's what I was saying. After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hoskara Temple's main hall. There they found Iris in her room and arrested her. And, and ever since, she's been under police supervision at the detention center. Yes, I suppose. Can't deny any of that. Uh, wh where are you going with this? You telling me her spirit's not in her body? What? Phew, thank goodness. It looks like he's finally convinced. Don't you fucking dare give me that look. Not with that body. But something still seems way off. I'm still not convinced that the iris here is one and the same from the other night. Hm. I suppose you're about to say something really ridiculous. I mean, they're twins, like the real Iris and the spirit of Dahlia, somehow switch places. I mean... <laughs> How could Morgan be so incompetent? <laughs> she had three daughters and not even name one of them with the name that started with M. <laughs> switch places. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, there's still quite a few things I don't understand, but I do know that unless we confirm the witness's identity, we can't continue with this trial. Iris doesn't have the spiritual power needed to channel Dahlia. Which means... The spirit is just super strong, baby. They must have switched places somewhere. Huh. They switched places at the fucking temple. When the earthquake happened. You fucking idiots. Well, Mr. Wright. But if that if that wait, if they switch places at the temple when the earthquake happened, then that means Then who the fuck is channeling Doc? what? Because Pearl wasn't doing it at that time. No fucking way. 
Hold up. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Hold up. Is there a way to forcefully get a spirit to just go into a but I mean, you know what? Mia does it all the fucking time. Is that Maya in front of me right now? Am I looking at Maya? Is this Maya in front of me? What the fuck? What are you guys doing? What kind of weird shit? Since the time she was arrested at Hazakura Temple. And there's been any chances for Iris to switch place. Am I talking to Maya right now? Maya? Hey, Maya, Maya darling. Hey, my Snap out of it, please. I need you here. Be strong. I think there might have been one chance. Oh, explain yourself. Just stay for a few minutes. Iris' whereabouts were unknown. Unknown? What do you mean? What I mean is... There was a span of time in which Iris was able to move about freely, unsupervised. Well, who was it? Who would give a murderous... <laughs> who would give a murder... <laughs> who would give a murder suspect time to move about freely like that? Can I blame it on Gadot? Can I blame it on Gadot? I'm sorry. I know you didn't mean to. It wasn't your fault. The person who gave Iris a chance to freely move about. I'm sorry, buddy. I'll make it up to you later. This is Mr. Edgeworth, isn't it? Your Honor? There was a fairly large earthquake yesterday, was there not? Earthquake? Hmm. <laughs> Time to push Edgy under the bus. <laughs> Just like, he said, bitch down, me up. Oh my god, the inner temple! This kind of trimmer might. How could I have? She fled. She escaped. Or escaped, as some of us would like to say. We went to the inner temple right away. And it's true. Everyone was, was already there. However, that would explain why there's fucking a million locks on there. They switch places. Fucking. She came out and she said, no one can get in here. Fucking lock your ass in there. You saying she failed the vibe checks? <laughs> she wasn't vibing hard enough. <laughs> they had already switched places by the point in time. When I arrived at the training hall, I was met by none other than Dahlia Hawthorne. That evil bitch. That evil bitch that I love so much. <laughs> That's quite enough already, Mr. Wright. Now see here. No judge in the right mind would consider the idea... What? I'm sorry? Oh, there she is! It's been a long time, Mr. Judge. Why give yourself away like that? That voice. I guess I have to ask again. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, I always ask her name and profession. That's one of my rules. Never introduce yourself first. Dahlia Hawthorne. In my current profession, permanently retired. Like a JoJo villain. <laughs> retired! So you're not going to bother hiding your identity anymore, huh? Why should I? After all, I'm dead. Oh, the evil! Start doing JoJo poses? <laughs> There's really nothing you can do to punish me. What's going on here? Why are you so evil? Dahlia Hawthorne. I never thought we'd meet again. I never thought we'd meet like this. But this time, I'll end it. For her, and for myself. Yeah, son of a bitch. <laughs> Why is she so hot? <laughs> just like Squidward, you know, I'm just like, come on, Squiddy, just imagine him in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot! You fucking... <laughs>
Oh my god. Now then, let's continue where we left off, shall we? Well, witness? Yes, how can I help you, Mr. Judge? Well, it seems that we're to learn the truth. We'll need to hear your testimony. I have no problem with that. But, when you've seen what I've done, what I have, wait, what? When you've seen what I have, sometimes the truth is better left unknown. In any case, let's hear your testimony. Tell us about the plan that was carried out that night. The whole plan began with my death. A stupid plan hatched by Morgan Fay to install her own daughter as the next master. But for it to work, Maya Fay would first have to die. The idea was for me to kill Maya and then have the blame pinned. Oh wow, why? Why pin it on her own daughter? What the fuck is wrong with you? The plan went wrong, but it seems to have succeeded anyways. What the hell? Oh shit, thanks for the raid. I don't know why my god that- For some reason, my raid notification, well, Twitch alert, doesn't work. I don't know why, it just doesn't. And it pisses me off, sadly. But, thank you for the raid. If I can clear my eyes and see the screen real quick. What does that say? Them Turk 217. Hope I'm saying that right. Turk raid. Reminds me of Turok. But anyways, I was informed that whenever a raid happens, I should introduce myself. So, I will do just that. Hello, my name is Firestorm. We are currently playing... Phoenix Rice, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations, off the HD collection. And we are on the last case, the last trial. So, kind of a lot of spoilers going on here right now. And, you know, all that goodness. Uh, me, as you can see on the screen, I have a Twitter and a YouTube. On YouTube, don't expect much. I fucking re-upload the streams that I do, which I haven't done in a couple of months, so I just, I'm just, I'm backed up with a couple of streams I have to upload at some point. And on Twitter, I just try to do what I can do. But for the most part, I just play games. That's what I do. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking to become famous or anything. I do it for, I just do it as a hobby. That's it, really. If anything comes of it, I appreciate it. If you guys stick around or want to do any of that, I appreciate that. As of this current moment, my streaming schedule is very fucky. Um, because I work night shifts and stuff like that, and I'm not able to stream all the time. And next week, uh, the entirety of the week, I'm working every goddamn night. So, yeah. I also have a very extreme loud household. So, if you ever hear anything in the background, I apologize for that. Mostly it will be children screaming, by the way. Thank you for the follow. I greatly appreciate it. But yeah, that's me in a nutshell. And with that said, I shall continue. Um, also, one other thing I just want to say. Fucking, uh, if none of you have it at all. <laughs> thank you for the follows. If none of you have it at all, uh, for every streamer out there in the goddamn known universe, you should really go and install BTTV. It's an add-on for your browser if you're on a PC. And what that does is if another streamer has it active or whatever, they can have uh they can have like animated animated uh emotes and like take emotes from just the online community in general and just throw that on there because Twitch is very stingy with emote slots and it's completely free. No one ever has to pay for it. I currently have one on there called Chad Wellington. And then uh that's it really. And I guess it's going to slowly become obsolete because now Twitch does animated emotes after like 15 million years. So that's cool. <laughs> but with that said, let's continue with some more Phoenix, right? Shall we? Did you just say the plan was to kill Maya Faye? Yes. You have a problem with that? Don't give us that nonsense. Watch yourself, Drake. What do you mean, watch myself? You fucking throwing coffee at me and shit. Watch yourself. If you got a problem, solve it during the cross-examination. That's one of my rules. Mr. Goddard is correct. And by the way, 
That's one of my rules as well. To kill Maya. Could it be true? I love how they're like, do it. I love how they're like, do it. Do it during cross examination. Meanwhile, I'm already fucking here to do cross examination. It's my, it's my time. You guys are just yelling at me before the thing pops up on screen. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Mega Man follow. <laughs> fucking love Mega Man. I suck at it, but I love Mega Man. <laughs> Don't know what it would do if that wasn't okay. All right. Let me continue. The whole plan began with my death. Stupid hatch plan by Morgan Faye to install her daughter as the next one. But, it worked. I to die. Why would you pin it on Iris, though? You were gonna kill Maya? Pearl didn't need to know anything about it. All she had to do was follow the instructions in the letter and channel me. Then I would have simply used her body and finished the job. In any case, I'm already dead, and there's nothing any of you can do to me. Man, if this is what being dead is like, I would fucking... Just kill me now. Just do it now. God, strike me down with your thunder. So I can just fuck over everybody. The plan was to blame the crime on your own twin sister. On Sister Iris of Hoskura Temple. She and I looked absolutely identical, so no one can tell us apart. If someone were to witness me killing Maya... Naturally, they would think it was Iris that did it. And the witness in this case was the head nun, Sister Bikini. I never would have guessed she was going to return to Oscar Temple that night. But she wound up seeing Iris' crime anyways. But why did you want to pin the murder on Iris in the first place? She's your twin sister, isn't she? Twin sister? Don't make me laugh. She's nothing but a backstabber. I couldn't care less about her. She did say she did betray her. Oh, okay. Backstabber. You just don't understand. You never will. Anyways. What the fuck? <laughs> Would pay the devil twice as much to keep her soul. Fuck that. Just. Iris is just having a bad time right now. I feel bad for her. Okay. See, plan went wrong. It seems everything succeeded anyways. Give me more information on that one. We're talking about Pearl Fay, is that correct? Yes. Though at first she had high hopes for the two of us. Even your twin sister, Iris. That's correct. Fortunately, neither of us had much spiritual power. That's why we were abandoned by her. Along with our father. Abandoned. The only person I ever really cared about in life was myself. My sister was a nuisance, so I convinced my father to leave her at an old temple. You mean Iris? Yes, my father remarried a woman who was on, who also had a daughter. The less children you have, the more money there is to go around, right? Wait, what? Yeah. And on top of that, my father had absolutely no interest in children in general. Wow, your family's just fucked. Horrible. The, the really horrible one was the woman. That bitter, vengeful woman. It was her stubbornness that gave birth to that child, Pearl Fay. She was born with an abundance of spiritual power, unfortunately for her. Pearl Fay heaped all of her broken hopes and dreams onto the poor child's back. All because of her pathetic dreams of having her bloodline become the main family. So if you hate your mom, why the fuck did you do it? Oh my, is, you, is her hatred for the Faye family in general just so high that she doesn't care? That's pretty awesome. That's pretty fucking metal. <laughs> oh man. Surprise Pearl turned out as precious as she is. She is. Oh my god. <laughs> fucking I love her so much. That's why I want Dahlia to be fine. She's just an adult Pearl. The whole plan began with my dad. So why would it begin with your dad? Was your mom, was her mom just sitting there in a jail cell going, I can't wait till the day my fucking daughter dies. It's just gonna be uphill from there. <laughs> oh, Propatine. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna throw an emo up in the chat. 
uh, there is a running joke when it comes to Phoenix Wright here on my channel, in which a Pearl is the secret mastermind behind everything that goes bad, and we call her Pearl Patine, which is a mixture between Pearl and Palpatine. And I had an emote made by the wonderful Volta Base, which is in the chat now. I love her. She's amazing. <laughs> but let us continue. All right, you were executed last month, correct? Yes, I was hanged. It wasn't exactly pleasant. You were hanged? What? When the fuck did this game come out? This is the third game in the series. This game came out, what, 2007? Or something? Or was it like earlier than that? They still hung people during that? No lethal inject. Fuck. Jesus. How did you manage to discuss the plan? When did you talk to Morgan Fay? Last year. She was transferred to the same detention center as me. Since I was on death row and she was my mother, it was actually pretty easy to meet with her. I see. So that's when you discussed the plan. Huh. Are you crazy? At first, that woman was planning to kill me as well. What? What is wrong with you guys? Even though I'm her only- even though I'm her own daughter. All to make Pearl Faye the master of the cure. She's a cold, twisted woman. She thought she could finally regain her lost honor. The honor she lost when her younger sister, Misty, took her place as the master. Ever, ever since that day, she's been working on this plan. Plan, hmm. You guys are fucked up. <laughs> 2004. Oh, man. I forgot, yeah. Shit. I'm thinking of, like, the localized versions of the GBA. Or DS. Yeah, because it never got localized on the GBA for us. It got localized on the DS, and then half of the other series just never came. That's why we're getting the, Grace, the great uh, Ace Chronicles in, like, a month or two. Hmm. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Oh, my God. This family is just terrible. <laughs> fuck it. It's kind of funny, too. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little funny. She's like, oh, she's like, what? Me help her? She was trying to kill me too. But I was like, fuck it anyways. I'm already dead. Doesn't matter. Might as well bring you all down with me. <laughs> uh, I had to close my eyes during the E3 presentation for uh, Great Ace Attorney because I was like, no, I can't. No, I don't want to know any of this stuff. Won't show it to me. All right. I got to get more details. Maya would have to die? But why? For our bloodline to succeed as a main family, thus making Pearl the new master. The remaining descendants of the current master had to be taken care of. A Pearls would never agree to a plan like that. She adores Maya. How sad. You still don't get it, do you? What Pearls wanted had nothing to do with it. Listen, Pearl planned it from the beginning. She It was during a phone call with her mom. She was like, what if we just kill the bitch? <laughs> what if we just do it? Morgan didn't care one bit about Pearl. The only thing she cared about was the position of the master. That's all. That's ridiculous. She was willing to sacrifice anything and anyone to achieve her goal. The life of her daughter, and naturally, the life of Maya Faye as well. How could anyone do that? Just evil ass family. <laughs> Not Pearl too. No one's fuck. Everyone in the Faye family is fucked up. They're either fucked up or they're dead or they're gonna die real soon. They have very short life expectancies. That's why all the fathers picked up and left. They said, bro, what is this shit? And they said men were violent? What? <laughs> Everyone's backstabbing each other? Crazy. It's fucking World War III out here. You think the plan was a success? You heard me. Just as that woman had hoped. Maya Faye is dead. Now the title of the master will pass on to Pearl. Bro, what? This is some real Lion King shit. Cause it's like... Even though you can come out and be like, It was me. I killed Mufasa. I shot Tupac. Fucking... Everyone will just go, eh, whatever, the bloodline, fight for it, who cares, you won, yeah, you're king, we're all fucked, the lands are gonna run barren, and we live with the hyenas now. 
That's absurd. Maya's just... She's just trapped. Trapped inside this sacred cavern. <laughs> I shot too far. It was you! Really? You're as foolishly optimistic as ever, aren't you? My darling Feeny. Don't you fucking call me that, you wicked bitch. I will. Godot, pass me some coffee. I'm feeling a bit parched over here. If you know my, you know what I mean? Do you want to know the truth? Ever since we met, I despised you. Your sniveling naivete and your pathetic faith in other people. I just want to know one thing. What did you personally think of Morgan Faye's plan? I told you already, didn't I? It was a stupid plan. It had no point, no value other than fulfilling her own greedy desires. Yes. It was certainly nothing to be proud of. Is that how you feel? Why'd you help her carry it out then? Why would you do it? Why would you kill Maya? Because you just hate Mia so much that you're like, fuck it, I can't kill her myself, I'll kill her sister. You may not understand it, being the kind and gentle soul that you are. You may not be able to appreciate why some why someone like me would help a woman like that. So tell me, why? Isn't it obvious? I'm not like that woman. I only act in my own self-interest. The reason I held her was for myself. For my own personal satisfaction. What did you say? So this woman, Dahlia Hawthorne, she had her own reasons for wanting Maya dead? <laughs> Better go in an armored truck today, cause me and... <laughs> what? Me and the babes will pop you can. The <laughs> baby, let's go. Oh man, I hate that meme so much. Do you understand? All right. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. I'm. I think this is the perfect time to use evidence on this, because this is the only thing I can think of. It's cause Mia. Yeah, it's cause Mia. You're fucking, you're, you're a demon. Could it be that your actual, your actual girl had nothing to do with my affair herself? As I said, none of you have the power to punish me anymore. Because I'm already dead. Bro, Mia's dead too. You know what? Eternal cat fight in hell. This is just what's gonna happen. Well, oh, you know what? It wouldn't work out because Mia, assuredly Mia, since she's a beautiful force ghost, she fucking went to heaven. And, you know, fucking Dahlia's out there rotting in hell. By the way, Dahlia, how, how is it in hell? Is the property good? Is the view nice? There's fire here and there and little, little sparks everywhere. Because I'm already dead. Well, I had the same problem, you see. I had a simple problem. You can't punish the dead, and you can't take revenge against them either. You wanted to take revenge on someone? I was sentenced to die because of that woman. Me effect. I somehow knew this was it. I wanted to send her a message. It was at her hands that I suffered from my first humiliation. I wanted her to feel the same pain she made me feel. Sadly, when I realized revenge wasn't possible, I gave up. And the reason it wasn't possible was it has because Mia Fea had already died. Yes, and I realized. There's only one way to take revenge against the dead. And how'd you do that? Even with the body, even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on forever. If you strike me down, I'll come back as more powerful than you can ever know. <laughs> she may be as above her bitch. Oh my god. I mean, depends. Depends the taste on the devil. I don't know, man. Devil might have some crazy type of taste down there. He's half goat. <laughs> we don't know what he wants to fuck. Alright, I wanted to take away the person that Mia Fey loved the most. I wanted to kill her with my own hands. That would be the one and only way I could take my revenge against Mia Fey. That was the reason I helped out with the woman's plans. Just for that? For that, you would kill Maya. 
Your girl was so, your girl was no different from the, from that of Morgan Face. What the fuck? This is crazy. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. What a cruel plan. Cruel, cold, and heartless. Hmm. Don't waste your time preaching to the dead. I've already told you. It's nothing you can do to me. I don't know, I just want I want a fucking exorcist to walk in here and go, Be gone, spirit! Holding up a cross and shit. Pouring salt over her. Splashing her with holy water. And then Simon Belmont comes busting through the other door. Starts whipping her. <laughs> About 9.30pm, I materialized into this world. I quickly pinned my hair up and put on a demon warding hood, which is now proven to be useless because the demon's right there. <laughs> Just imagine Dahlia with the strap. Oh, God. <laughs> With the strap on going ham on Satan, he would be into that. You know what? I would be into that too. <laughs> she can do whatever she wants to me, except for the killing part. I'm not up for that. Listen, I'm not into that snuff shit, okay? And I picked up the stuff. <laughs> I picked up the staff that was by my side and left hot So, it was Elise who channeled her after all. But. Why the fuck would Elise- What? The ridiculous head nun never noticed a thing. She left Maya Fey at the inner temple. Wobble back, clutching her poor old back. What did you do then? That kid was easier to handle than I had hoped. I caught up with her in front of the stone lantern. Then I took out my dagger I got from the storage room, man. So then you... You sang you stabbed Maya? It's strange, but... I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. Ain't no fucking way you did that. What does that mean, no clear memory? I don't know. I think... I think I, I... I think I was stabbed? You were stabbed? At the last minute, my fame must have stabbed me. Sure of it. So she's wounded in the cave? What the fuck? There's no way... No, no, there's no way. Then, then who the fuck is channeling you now? I still think I'm talking to Maya. I still think I'm talking to Maya. There's no way I'm not. It's not like her at all. Maya wouldn't stab a french fry with a plastic fork. Yeah, she would just shovel them all in her mouth like the human disposal she is. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, I suddenly lost consciousness. But before I did, I scrawled her name on the lantern. Just as, just as I was passing out, I wrote Maya behind my back. I hoped it would cast suspicion on her. I can't believe she was th thinking of that until the bitter end. That's where my memory temporarily stops. It stops. I don't have any memory of actually killing Maya with my own two hands. My very last memory was Maya's terror-filled eyes. When I woke up after that, I was in the sacred cavern surrounded by darkness. We were in the sacred cavern. What? Hold up, what? <laughs> wait, wait, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Why? <laughs> she can poison me, stab me, strangle me to death any day of the week. Thought when Mayo eats, she does the she does the one Kirby move? Oh my god, that'd be awesome. Especially like Kirby from Triple Deluxe, just like the super inhale. <laughs> I hope there's a gif of that. Oh my god. Fucking monster Maya is. Okay, so when she woke up, she was in the secret cavern. What the fuck happened? So, 
All right, so say, say somehow, say somehow Maya knew what was going on, right? And she said, uh-uh, can't let this bitch get out and hurt no one anymore. Fucking lock myself in. Fucking do my ninja signs. Summon the spirit. I'm just gonna trap myself in here. <laughs> you were in the sacred cavern. The entrance was sealed with one of those trick locks. So, did Maya set it up? So did Maya seal herself in, and then they switch places during the earthquake? And then fucking, uh... Dahlia sealed in her sister? Somehow I've been trapped in there. How'd you wind up in there? I like to know that myself. Anyways, I was worried. I didn't know whether or not Maya Faye was dead. And I swore I wouldn't return to the other world until I knew I had killed her myself. Hmm. For a ghost, you're one tough cookie. I wanted to get out of there and make sure she was dead. But, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get out. The trick lock stopped you. Huh. I didn't know how to remove it. So then, you're saying, you were actually confined against your will inside the sacred cabin? Yep. I wanted to get rid of that annoying lock as soon as possible. But it wasn't easy. I kept getting interrupted while I was working on it. Interrupted? It was early in the morning, but someone came into the training hall. What? Who? Could it have been Maya? I thought the same thing, but I couldn't see. Why not? If someone had spotted me, I would have lost my chance to take revenge. What the hell? There's a door. There's a door. There's a dog currently scratching at my door. <laughs> what the fuck? Should I have all the dogs in my room right now? I have three dogs in my house, by the way. I think they're all in my room at this current moment. Two of them are under the covers and the other one's in the cage. So I don't know what the fuck is scratching at my door right now. It's a monster. It's a demon. Dahlia heard her name. She's trying to get in. She's trying to kill me. Favorite thing about watching people play AA games for the first time is seeing them try try and work out what the fuck is happening. That's awesome. See, that's why that's one of the reasons why I always bring this up. And I'm sorry for people getting tired of hearing it. But that's also one of the reasons why, even though I bought Danganronpa 3 when it came out, I still haven't played it. Because I'm like, I wanna record this one day. And when I do that, it can't be on a re it can't be on a repeat playthrough because then that would ruin everything. <laughs> Dog was trying to protect you from the evil spirits. I don't know, none of them are barking right now. They're just sleeping. They're like, yep, something's scratching at the door, I don't give a fuck. If someone had spotted me, I would have lost my chance to take revenge. So I made sure to hide myself well at the back of the sacred cavern. That morning, only two people could have gone into the training hall. Well it sure as fuck wasn't me. And it sure as fuck couldn't have been Iris. So, Pearl would be one, right? Who the hell would be the second? That morning, only two people could have gone to the training hall. Maya and Pearl. Pearls went there to cover the hanging scroll and gravy. Because she's unpredictable. Still, I finally managed to remove the lock, but I was too late. What do you mean by that? The files had already started to gather. Files? Say files or flies? Flies. Oh, I said flies. The bridge had been fixed and the police had started their investigation. Correct. Naturally, I couldn't go out. So instead, I returned to the cavern and put the lock back on by myself. Damn, you must have been really mad when that happened. You're like, yeah, I'm free. And then you just hear, Hear this Rastafarian motherfucker walking up going, everything's gonna be alright. And you're like, damn it! I realized <laughs> I realized I wouldn't get a chance to see Maya's corpse, as I had hoped. But just then, Lady Luck showed up. Lady Luck. After that big earthquake, she showed up all by herself. The real Iris. She said she'd come to make sure the sacred cavern was alright. Stupid girl. 
I came out of the sacred cavern and got a feel for the situation. And then you trapped her in there. And I locked her away in my place. Fucking hell. <laughs> Lady Luck. Poor Iris is more like <laughs> Lady Misfortune. Oh god. I finally, f I finally learned exactly what had happened. It was then that I learned that the plan had actually succeeded. What do you mean, your plan has succeeded? I had mistook one thing, you see. That night, the one that had summoned me. I had assumed that it was Pearl. Well, of course you would have assumed that. It was written on the instructions. But, I was wrong. The person that actually called my spirit back was... Misty Fay, the picture book author. What? I mean, she could be the only one, because she did read the, the note that Pearl was like, I can't read this shit. Can you tell me how to kill how to kill my cousin? Well, that's really the only possibility, isn't it? After I lost consciousness in the garden. It was her body that was left lying there. My Fay. I wasn't able to kill her with my own hands, after all. But even so, I made her commit the most vile sin a human can commit. And that is... I... I don't know how to say that word, I'm gonna be honest. Matricide? Is that how you say that? The sin of killing her own mother. No way, man. Like, bro, you're fucked up. <laughs> Almost as fucked up as these shrooms, man. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? It's true that I was the one who attacked Maya Fey, but even so, the murderer who actually snuffed out Misty Fey's life was none other than your darling little Maya. Ridiculous. That's nonsense. You sure about that? <laughs> she just she's the new fucking John Cena meme, just punching a hole through the green screen like, you sure about that? <laughs> There's even evidence supporting these facts, isn't there? What? What do you mean? What is the so-called evidence? The fact that my Fei had disappeared is evidence enough, isn't it? Hmm? The idea that she's still in the sacred cavern is just ridiculous. She wasn't able to escape from the inner temple that much is obvious. In that case, there's only one place she could be. Right here, right now, on the stand. Fucking hell. 10 out of 10 music. Love it. This is a good soundtrack. I do listen to the soundtrack on my spare time. I dance to it too. But I don't talk about that. Do I have to spell it out? The bottom of the Eagle River. Where else? You saying she committed suicide? Ridiculous. My Faye killed her long lost mother. Can you imagine the guilt she must have felt when she realized that? That's why she threw herself into the Eagle River. Most bodies that wind up in there are lost forever. Um, hello? We're both living- well, one of us is living proof anyways, but you know what I mean, fucking- You fucking survived it when you were like nine or some shit. So what do you have to say now, Feeny? And I just got back from surviving it. Who the fuck is calling my phone? You used to call me on my cell phone Late night when you need my love Oops, sorry, that's my phone What kind of ringtone is that? You died here Okay, thanks Was it something important? They just finished removing the locks from the sacred cabin That's great! What about Maya? Uh, there was a woman in the cave. Was it Maya Fey? It was the accused, Sister Iris. Huh? Don't look so surprised. I locked her in there yesterday. I just finished telling you that. So, what about Maya? Where is she? There was no one else found inside the sick cavern. No. Can't be. I told you, didn't I? She's dead. Listen, you evil little bitch. 
I know she's right there in front of me. <laughs> A fucking banger, that's why. Oh, man. It seems that this case has come to an end. A tragic end. Sadly, it appears the killer of Elise, also known as Misty Fay, was her own daughter, Maya Fay. Overcome with guilt for what she had done, Maya Fay jumped to her death into the raging waters of the Eagle River. It can't be. Huh! right? Have you ever heard this one? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. No matter how improbable it may seem. What's that supposed to mean, Prosecutor Gadot? According to this witness, Maya Fay threw herself into the Eagle River. However, is that really the truth? Remember, this woman testified earlier that... The bridge was already on fire when the murder was taking place in the garden. Which means if Maya had thrown herself into the river, it must have been from the inner temple side near the bridge. Which means she wouldn't make the river. That's right. That's where she jumped from. But that's impossible. It's impossible to jump into the river from there. What? Don't get your panties all twist up right. Just relax and think thoroughly. Thanks thoroughly. Just relax and think through the whole thing again. You got a click clack or wind back. <laughs> so, it's impossible. Maya couldn't have thrown herself into Eagle River. Your dot's coming to save the day. Both metaphorically and literally. Miss Hawthorne claims Miss Faye threw herself into the river from the inner temple side. Do you have any evidence that refutes that claim? Yeah, damn right I do. Second verse, same as the first, bitch. We did it five years back and we're bringing it back again. It's impossible to jump to the Eagle River from the inner temple side. No one knows this better than the witness. What'd you say? Eleven years ago, we jumped into the very same river. Just take a look at this overhead map. <laughs> that has been hard carrying Phoenix the whole entire time. You know, I just wanna <laughs> I just want a picture of a Godot like running a Final Fantasy 14 raid. And he's just like he's just looking at Phoenix. He's like, Did you put on your fucking tank stance? Put on your damn stance. <laughs> just start carrying his ass. I still don't know why, why, but it's cool of him. It is. I can see. Below the cliff on the inner temple side is big rock. Is a big rock shell. That's a weird descriptor. You're right. She wouldn't have reached the river if she jumped off there. In other words, if she had jumped, we should be able to see her body in this photo. <laughs> So you finally figured it out. You. No. Yeah, that's right. Be gone, demon. You're just playing with me. Maya Faye's body is at the bottom of the Eagle River. There's nowhere else she could possibly be hiding. Miss Hawthorne, have you ever heard this one before? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Yes, just a few minutes ago. Maya Fey wasn't inside the sacred cavern. We now know that she didn't throw herself into the Eagle River. Correct. That eliminates all that eliminates all the most likely possibilities. Now, although it seems improbable, there's still one other place she could be. I'm just gonna save that just in case I royally fuck up somehow. Which I will. What? What is this one possibility you're talking about? That's obviously a bluff. So where's her dead body then? Finally. I think the pieces are falling into place. Normally, the living have no way to punish the dead. 
but I think that's where <laughs> I think I think this is where, eh, I can't read but I think this there's a way to give Dahlia Hawthorne the ultimate punishment shall I tell you Miss Hawthorne shall I tell you where Maya Faye <laughs> is this very instant Maya Faye is in this very courtroom There's only one possibility left. Namely, she's right here in this very courtroom. What? My face here? You can see her here? <laughs> Dahlia Hawthorne. I seem to recall that you said I had misunderstood one thing, you see. So what? But I think there's more than one thing you understood. You misunderstood. My bad. Fucking up my reading. So, like, it was basically gone through this whole game already, but Godot's name is pronounced Godot. Oh. See, see, Greg, why didn't you say that? You never told me that. You just always went Godot, and I'm like, how else do you pronounce his name? You never told me. You See? I'm blaming it on him. Everybody attack him. Or her. Or they. I don't know. I apologize. <laughs> Can't read, so I never bothered. <laughs> Oh, man. That is true. I cannot read. Joke's on me. Hey. Listen, joke always has to be on me. Tell me something. At this very moment, who's channeling Dahlia Hawthorne? Why that? That's obvious. It's Pearl Fay. That pathetic little sniveling runt. You're wrong. Pearl's tried, but she couldn't do it. I never failed at channeling someone. This is the first time it happened. To be fair, reading is hard. Hey, listen. I would... Here's a little story time, right? In my school, I was always the one to raise my hand because even though I think I can't read, me reading to the class was way better than having the person who read at, like, a first grader level in high school. And I would be like, just let me do it. Just let me do it. Either I read or the teacher reads. Right? <laughs> Is there any explanation for why you couldn't channel the spirit? It can happen if someone else was already channeling the same spirit. <laughs> yeah, you know that feeling exactly. And it's, I never got that because this is not this is not to like attack anyone, right? But I just never got it because people are like, why would I read a book if I can just go on my phone? And I'm like, gee, why would you read a book if you can just stare at a white screen with words on your phone? Make it make sense. <laughs> like, I never got that. I'm like, you, you do it anyways. Someone called me before Pearl did, but who? Pearl's even tried again on the day after the crime. But she couldn't do it. What could this mean? I think the truth is becoming clear to you right about now. Am I correct? <laughs> Take one for the tea. <laughs> it wasn't Pearls that channeled you. There was someone who called you before she could. Oh! You done fucked up! This is an easy one. Pearls couldn't do it. And Misty Faye is gone. There's only one possibility left. Come on already. I can't stand the tension. Makes my beard tingle. Dahlia Hawthorne. The person channeling you right now must be Maya Faye. What? What did you say? How could that be? Remember what this witness Dahlia Hawthorne said about her goal. She said her goal was to kill Maya Fey. Yes, that's right. But if Maya channeled the spirit of someone that tried that was trying to kill her. <laughs> well, Gramps, what would happen? Could it be? It looks like you finally understand, Your Honor. Well, I don't. What are you going on about? Then what the fuck are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> what I'm going on about is the reason Maya channeled you. And there's only one reason to protect herself from you. Bro, she just, she played your ass like a fucking fiddle. <laughs> to protect herself from me? Yes. On the night of the crime, you were only interested in one thing. 
killing my effect. The path back to Hatsukuro... Hatsukuro was closed off and there was nowhere for her to run. So then the problem became, where would be the safest place to hide? What do you mean? That's when she channeled me. All this time you thought you had been channeled by pearls. That's why it never occurred to you. That Maya's hiding place was you. Don't say that. Oh wow, that's the first time I've seen that face. <laughs> Hello there in a British accent. Hey SP, nice seeing you again. Uh, she sucked at life once and now she sucks at afterlife. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> and even if you don't fuck up reading, you somehow always manage to miss my paragraphs. Oh, come on. I don't, I don't do that on purpose. Sometimes I'm just, you know, sometimes I just, small words on a small screen. <laughs> That's why I bought two screens. But I'm only going to use the other screen when I'm screen, uh, when I'm streaming PC games. So I don't have to window everything. Right. <laughs> you're saying that I, <laughs> you're saying that I, Dahlia Hawthorne, was played for a fool by that little whelp? You don't fucked up. My fake killed herself. Isn't that obvious? Sorry, but no. It would have been impossible for her to jump to Eagle River. This was the only avenue of escape open to Maya. The only way that Maya could disappear from the Inner Temple. I don't believe you. A stupid little girl like that who has never been out in the real world. She could never have come up with a plan like that. Never been out in the real world? She was kidnapped last year for fuck's sake. But you wouldn't know that because your ass was locked up on death row. Green Mile looking ass. <laughs> Green Mile is a great movie. I recommend everyone go watch it. It's beautiful. Who could have ever given her such a brilliant idea? Well, me, of course. Mia. Mia Fey. It's been a long time, Dahlia Hawthorne. Where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> Pearl wasn't even in the room. So it's true. It was you. Yes. Huh. You're something else. Oh. What? What are you doing here? That hair. It's Pearl's, right? Tell me something, Dahlia. I want you to think back to the night one more time. You had just cornered Maya in the Inner Temple's garden. And then, in the final moments of the fight, you lost consciousness. I was stabbed by Maya Fey. Actually, Maya lost consciousness at the same time as you. She did. Not terribly surprising, since she was about to be killed. When she woke up, she was in the training hall. That's why Maya dec uh, that's why Maya decided she needed help, so she channeled me. She explained in a memo the situation she was in. She asked me what I thought she should do. She did that? I can't believe it. Of course, I didn't have... I didn't have all the details, but one thing was perfectly clear, and that was, I knew that you couldn't be allowed to wander free. Free? What do you mean? It was a race against time, so I wrote down two things that Maya had to do. Channel Dahlia Hawthorne as soon as possible, and lock herself in the sacred cavern until help arrived. So it was Maya who put the lock on. Fucking called it. Yes. Why did- I called that the same way I called Avatar being announced at fucking E3. Fucking called it. Yes. But why did you order her to do those two things? If she hadn't done it, Dahlia Hawthorne would have been channeled by someone else. By one pro fay. Pearls. Yes. This is like a fucking horror movie. Oh my god, it's like a slasher movie. Fucking- <laughs> Don't let- Don't let the ghosts free. One of you have to sacrifice yourselves. Yes, Pearls didn't properly understand the plan, so all she was trying to do was follow her mother Morgan Fay's instructions. If she had succeeded in channeling Dolly Hawthorne's spirit, things would have turned out very badly, to put it mildly. 
So, that's how it was. Dolly Hawthorne would have used the body of Pearl Fay to kill Maya at all costs. Yes, certainly sounds like that was the intent all along. How dare you? I won't forget this. <laughs> Why not just admit it, Dahlia Hawthorne? Your little plan was nothing but a big failure. Yes, another failure to add to the pile of shame. What did you say? What do you mean by another? Think about it, Dahlia. Remember all your past crimes? Not a single one of them was a success. They all ended up in failure. What? How dare you? Eleven years ago. The fake kidnapping. Your very first crime. <laughs> Alright. Sorry, I'm just looking at the chat right now because it's been a while since I checked. <laughs> Dahlia thinks she's so damn smart. Oh, God. So now you have no excuses. <laughs> damn right I don't. <laughs> yeah, no worries <laughs> about that. How does a man not see a fish over the wall of text twice in the stream? <laughs> we have fucked up Dahlia twice. Alright. That was awesome. You had your hands on two million dollar diamond, but you done fucked up, lost it in the river, and you broke ass. Now you had no family. <laughs> at, their, at their Terry falls since since now Greg's gonna be on my ass about it <laughs> escaped and, and went meeting Valerie Hawthorne the truth was exposed shut your mouth it wasn't my fault it's because of that stupid oath of a prisoner the man who couldn't even speak coherent sentences that weakling of a policewoman and then one year later he tried to kill me well I'm still alive, bitch! Just the David Chappelle moment. I'm rich, bitch! You wound up killing someone else. As a result, you were sentenced to death. It's one stupid move after another for you, but it's no longer funny. You wipe that smug, happy-go-lucky smile off your face. And now this. You messed up again. You let Maya Faye escape, even though she was right there in front of you. Mia Faye. Oh, it's a demon! Oh. You spinster. Spinster? What the fuck is a spinster? <laughs> Miss Finster, Miss Finster. I was supposed to kill Maya Faye like I swore I would. And if only you hadn't gotten this spiky haired jerk, the guilty bird, I would have been hanged to death. True. But I think you finally understand, Dolly Hawthorne. You will never defeat me. When you strike me down, I will come back stronger than you can ever imagine. <laughs> what did you say? Whether you're alive, dead, or somewhere in between, you'll never defeat me. As long as I'm around, you're destined to lose for all of eternity. I remember what you said earlier in the trial. You said there was no way we could punish you. Because you were already dead. What about it? Then you said... Even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on forever. <laughs> That's very true, Dahlia. And that's exactly the punishment you'll never be able to escape from. For all of eternity, you'll have to remain as Dahlia Hawthorne. A miserable, pathetic, weak creature who can never win at anything. And for you, there's no escape from that. No hope for freedom. Since the day you were executed, the narrow bridge that once stretched out in front of you has burnt to a crisp. You're wrong. She's gonna fucking cause an earthquake.
no longer matters. I don't care whether you win or lose anymore. The only thing I want is for you to come out of Maya's body right now. The demon! Be gone, bitch! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she basically became Nakali from Street Fighter V. <laughs> I'm not ready. Not ready to go. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah! Somebody get her to a hospital. Is this the first time we ever saw Maya with her hair down? Oh my god, you look so pretty. <laughs> uh, still Team Hawthorne, can't change that. That's fine, no one will judge you. Hey listen, even when I was a fucking kid growing up, sometimes I have root for the bad guy. I used to watch fucking Shallon Showdown, I was like, come on Wuya, you can do it. Fuck yeah! Beat up that little bald-headed son of a bitch! <laughs> Fucking Omi. Uh, now there's little Freddy Cougar. Death won't take her. I wouldn't be surprised if she showed up in the future. Oh man. Challenge Showdown was the shit it was. I love the theme music. I wish it was longer. Now then, I assume you are the real Iris? Yes. I was just rescued from the Shaker Cabin. I must say, you and your twin sister are indeed identical from what I can see. In any case, it appears that everything has finally been cleared up. Mr. Godot, since I gotta say that right now, what happened to Dahlia Hawthorne? If you ask me, Your Honor, it looks like she went back to hell. <laughs> she went back to the hell she came from. Oh, wow. It seems that Misty Faye wasn't the only victim of this crime. Maya Faye as well. As the young Pearl, as the young Pearl Fay, was also victims in this wicked and selfish plan. Yes, Your Honor. The tragedy of Medium Valley has finally come to an end. It seems. It would be best for everyone if no further attempt was made to channel the spirit again. Hmm. Your Honor. Yes. What is it about this whole spirit medium thing? It's almost weird how comfortable you seem to be with the concept now. Well, to be frank, my younger brother is quite judgmental. He often criticizes me for not studying hard enough. That's why I made a, I made a, <clears throat> I made a concert effort to study up on the curing channeling technique. Hey, is that a New Year's issue of Occult? <laughs> Occult. I've seen quite a few things in my many years on the bench. Especially when I played for that little league team of baseball when I was a kid. Sat on the bench the whole entire time. <laughs> and all that time, I finally learned this one thing. Each case is different and takes place in its own world, if you will. In order to fully understand the world, first we have to immerse ourselves in it completely. And that's where my brother and I used to differ. Hmm, never thought of it that way. At any rate, it's time to pass judgment in the case of Iris of Hoskura Temple. Objection. <laughs> it must be hard to be a pinch warmer. What the fuck, Gado? What do you want? You're a little too fast with that gap, Rod. What do you mean by that, Mr. Gado? This trial, it isn't over yet. That's what he means. What? Right. Remember what Miss Evil Spirits said in her testimony? Well, Dahlia's testimony? I caught up with her in front of the stone lantern. Then I took out a dagger. Then I took out the dagger and got from the store. I got from the storeroom, man. Oh, bam. Strange, but 
I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. I think... I think I was stabbed. Uh, this is Dahlia Hawthorne was about to attack Maya. She was stabbed and killed by someone. Yes, that's right. The person that was ultimately killed was the spirit medium that channeled Dahlia. At least, at least, no, Misty Fay. But we don't know. We still don't know who did it. This isn't over. Oh, God. Who killed Misty Fay? <laughs> it's the end of a lie. Unless someone else is found guilty to, uh, found guilty, the accused is still on trial. It was me. I did it. I stabbed her. Take me. God damn it. Come on, guys. It was self-defense. Let her go. <laughs> we can't let her walk until there's evidence that proves her innocence. No way. But this court isn't prepared. Ready for their testimony. Prosecution is ready to call our final witness. Final witness? This one will clear up the whole mystery. The mystery of who killed Misty Fay. My fucking god. <laughs> she definitely won't return. Oh, that's sad. Challenge showdown was my challenge. That shit's awesome. There just no way. It was the umbrella. What the fuck? She did it. It did it. It's really all right, Mr. Prosecutor. Of course it's all right, Madam Attorney. Very well then. Who is this final witness? Huh. Isn't it obvious? It's Maya. There's one person who saw the whole event and will put the final dagger in the case. Someone who saw the murder took place? That very person who saw her mother killed in front of her own eyes. You mean Maya? You can't. She can't testify after what she's just been through. <laughs> Catch those hard wings. Of course I did. There's a million of them. We need to find the truth. The prosecution calls Maya Fate to the witness stand. Oh my fucking god. Very well. But first... We take a brief recess. I am yawning like a crazy motherfucker. We'll have to wait for Miss Faye to recover before summoning her. Once we receive the doctor's permission, we will proceed with the trial. Yes, hey Trite, I got something to say to you, so listen up. What is it? I don't think much of you as a lawyer. It's always the same with you. You somehow managed to just squeak by without even a faint of understanding of the case. Some beautiful woman always seems to come dashing in the last minute to save you. You got some nerve. That's not going to happen this time. This time, you're going to have to do this by yourself. That's enough. This court is now in recess. Do you son of a bitch. Oh, Iris, come here. Cry into my arms. Your sister's an evil bitch. I'm really sorry about everything. You were working so hard to defend me. When I was missing all day... And we didn't even have a chance to talk. She's right. When I met Iris at the training hall yesterday, they had already switched places, and Iris was inside the sacred cavern. I wanted to at least be in the defendant's box today to root on you. Well, it wasn't your fault. You were locked up this whole time. There's something more important than that, though, I have to ask you. Why did you help your sister out as much as you did? Huh? If you had tried to get help at the sacred cavern yesterday, you wouldn't have spent an entire day locked up in there. Yeah, for real, you could have just ran up and go, Fucking help me! For my sister, I felt sorry for her. Because you betrayed her before? You never explained that, by the way. She was abandoned by her mother and never, and never got any love from our father either. Yes, but it was the same for you too, wasn't it? Yes, but at least I had Sister Bikini, who was like a mother to me. If only Dahlia had come with me to Hotsgrove Temple. I always... I always loved her. Dahlia was always so smart, so strong. <laughs> Apparently not smart enough. She never complained about a thing. You sure about that? 
That's why. That's why I promised her that I would help her. Are you talking about the fake kidnapping case 11 years ago? Yes. I wanted to be useful to her in some way. But, as usual, I was too cowardly. At the last minute, I ran away. Because of that... Dahlia's stepsister, Valerie, ended up. That was the case that wounded Mia so badly. She's definitely smart, but her plans never work. <laughs> I know. But things didn't end there, of course. Some people suspected that my sister was involved in the murder. Some people. It must mean... Yes, two defense attorneys. Mia Fey and Diego Armando. Look at his fucking face! Look at his, look at his smarmy ass sexy look. His two fucking earrings. Look at this motherfucker. <laughs> look at him. He knows what he's doing. He's like, mm hmm. About to head to a rager after this. After poisoning Mr. Armando, who was getting too close to learning the truth. Is that why his eyes are all fucked up? What'd she do? Dolly even tried to kill the person who had unknowingly hit the poison for her. You. That's right. Iris. There's one thing that I have to ask you. Yes, what is it? On the night of the murder, the person that cleaned up the corpse of the victim, Elise. Was it really you? Yes, it was me. That night, after I rang the lights out bell, I went back to my room. At around 10.30, I received a call on my cell phone. Poison fucked up a man. But, okay, wait, here's my qu- You know what? I totally forgot that fucking- It was- They said earlier that a lawyer did get fucking poisoned or whatever, but I was so caught up on, uh, the defendant, right, being poisoned and shit, that I completely forgot about it. But didn't she put poison in the coffee? So why does he even trust coffee? What the hell, man? <laughs> That's why he just drinks a bunch of it now? There's a problem. Come to the inner temple right away. I got on a snowmobile and headed back for the inner temple. But... The path to the inner temple was cut off, right? Exactly. We can't just leave the body here. So, you gotta do this exactly as I say, got it? <laughs> It was me. I was the one that received her body. The murder weapon had been left in her in her body so she couldn't eh, so she wouldn't breathe too much. The staff that Mystic Elise always held. I knew it. So the actual murder weapon was the staff. Yes, that's right. I brought the body back to Hudsgrew Temple on the snowmobile. Why did you alter the body? I didn't want anyone to know that the staff was the murder weapon. I didn't want to leave anything that would lead back to Misty Fay. So I dressed her up in a robe and stabbed her with the... I'm not saying the name of that sword. <laughs> I wiped the blood off the staff's blade and left, it, and left it next to her on the ground. Iris, just tell me one more last thing. Tell me the name of the person that called your cell phone. The real killer. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I can't do that. I can't say who did it. I see. Defendant! Yes? The judge is calling you. He wants you to see... He wants to see you in his chambers. <laughs> That's creepy. To say his office. His chambers. What the fuck is this? He has some questions about Dolly Hawthorne. All right. Well then, I'll see you later. 
There's something I want to tell you. Oh. Okay. Something she wants to tell me. Well, it can't be I love and you, right? <laughs> Bullshit. It will never happen. I can never be so lucky. So it's true. I was cooperating with the real killer. Maybe even from the very beginning. Phoenix? Maya? Um... Did I say Maya? My bad. Mia? <laughs> Mia, how's Maya doing? Physically, I'm not worried. She will cover completely. But emotionally, she's been hurt very badly in this case. I see. You don't mean she learned who Elise really was? Yes. I went to the medical office and talked with her. I told her everything I knew. But why? Maya's stronger than you think. I knew she could take it. All of it. What do you mean by that? I want you to figure that answer all by yourself. The trial's about to restart. The real killer. Do you know who it really is? Iris wouldn't tell me who killed her, who called her, but still. I think it just... I think that just maybe I know who it was. <laughs> that was the whole point of the first case. The reason why Mia took the, took the Phoenix case was because of Armando. Right. I suffered from, let's see. Oh, I suffered enough. She doesn't need to see the judge chamber. So I, Iris, Madame, defendant, can you meet me in my chambers? So you want the not guilty verdict, I see. How bad do you want it? <laughs> Why am I putting dirt on the judge like that? He's he's a goofball, but he's not he's not a bad person. He's the careful love and think about. Oh shit. All right. That night, the victim was killed in the garden of the inner temple. And the criminal wasn't just there by accident. Which means that the killer knew of Dolly's plans from the very beginning. But one more thing. The victim was moved to the Hosgrove Temple side by Pendulum. In other words, the criminal couldn't cross the body. Cross the body? Why did I say that? Couldn't cross the bridge. <laughs> that means that... You know what? <laughs> You know exactly why I said couldn't cross the body? Because in my mind, I'm like, I'm like, who was it? Right now, sound, sounds a little ludicrous. But I think it was Misty Faye. I think it was Misty Faye. <laughs> that means Misty Faye stabbed herself and then fucking, and then just, wait, wasn't she stabbed in the back though? So how, what the fuck, how'd she do that? How she managed to do that? What? Huh. Okay, anyways. <laughs> that means they were stuck on the inner temple side for almost an entire day. Exactly. So the culprit was someone that was in Hotskura Temple the following day. That's as much as help I can give you. She went up to her daughter and traumatized her sound suspicion. Uh, okay, I got it. Thank you, Mia. Finally. Almost time to bring the case to an end. I love how, I love how Godot was like fucking, every time a woman comes out and helps you, well, that's not gonna happen this time, Phoenix. And before we even get back on the trial, is exactly what happens. What exactly did Maya see anyways? And who was it that actually killed Misty Fay? Whoever it was, I have to prove that. Me. All by myself. All by my lonesome. Oh, fucking God. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. It was a really long trial. <laughs> February 10th, 3.36 p.m., District Court. Room number one, number one, number seven. <laughs> uh, to be honest, if Mia wasn't, was MVV, MVP, Godot would have closed the book by now. Definitely. He would have said, fuck it. Now then, before we proceed any further, I'm going to announce the results of the test that we performed earlier. Test. Yes. Test on the blood of Dagger was found stuck in the pine, pine tree. Oh yeah, that. Totally forgot. That's the weapon that Maya used when she fought with the victim. 
So, what are the results? Was it the victim's blood, or...? Due to time constraints, a full test was impossible. However, there's one thing we can say for certain. The blood that was on the dagger was not the victim's blood. Ooh, that's bad. And that is all. Now then, let's restart the trial. So, it wasn't Misty's blood on the dagger. Then whose was it? I'm sure both defense and prosecution know this, but this trial is rapidly coming to a close. Both sides will need to show some firm evidence with their claims. I understand, Your Honor. What I've heard, the witness is dangerously weak, physically speaking. So, let's finish this quickly. Agreed. Very well. Please bring the last witness. Another person got stabbed. <laughs> I mean, the only person who would be over there at the time, I dare I say it, was Pearl. But, but we're not that cold-hearted here. We can't stab a nine-year-old. <laughs> Witness, please tell us your name and profession. My FA, my profession is lawyer's assistant. I'm the assistant manager at Wright and Co. Law Office. You're damn right you are. Maya. According to the magazine I have here, you're a spear medium of the curing channeling technique. I'm frightened. The Fae Clan. I don't want any more to do with it. Oh, Maya. The pain the Fae bloodline laws must be unbearable. Very well. Now then, Miss Fae. When the, when the event occurred, you were in the Garden of the Inner Temple, and you witnessed the moment of Miss Elise's murder. Is this correct? I... Um, straighten up this instant, young lady. Huh? Pick your head up and speak clearly. There's always time for crying later. But I... Your mother was killed right in front of your eyes. There's nothing you can do to change that fact. <laughs> Alright, Godot. I get where you're coming from. It's a little hard, you know what I mean? He's like, suck it up, bitch. Your mom died. You probably killed her. <laughs> Cry later. <laughs> like, he means good. But come on, man. Give her a second. But there's something you can do. You can finish this. You've been watching the whole thing, right? You've seen the witness come out, and you've seen us squeeze the truth out of them. Now it's your turn. Let's hear your testimony. On the night of the crime, what exactly did you see? <laughs> I was just like, what we hoped Dolly would be. Exactly. Gotta say though, I do kind of miss the red hair. What? Other than that? Perfect. You can always use hair dye. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Iris is the best Faye. I'm still on the jury for that one. You know, going into this, coming back to the stream, I was like, Iris is the best. But then, in my mind, I'm like, I still like Maya a lot. <laughs> Maya's been there the whole time, right? All right. Let's see what we got. I was passing through the garden on the way to the spare prep room when it happened. Suddenly, someone struck me over the head. That shit hurt. I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. I think I screamed, help me. But then something warm splashed over me. That's when I lost consciousness. Something warm splashed over- what the fuck? Hmm. So you were struck on the head. I suppose it must have been the staff. Maya, the person who hit you. It was Dolly Hawthorne, wasn't it? I'm sorry, Nick. I just couldn't see. I don't know who it was. Maya, think hard. Sorry, Nick, but I really couldn't. Huh. Can't say it was especially a good night for young ladies to be walking around alone. I don't think any night's a good night for young ladies to be walking around alone. It seems that it will be hard to determine the criminal through testimony alone. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Please begin your cross-examination. Maya, hang in there. He doesn't look well at all. 
Oh, Maya, you little monkeyed ear beauty, you. Listen, I love Maya, but we gotta admit, she has ears like a monkey, and I love her for it. Somebody struck in the head. Someone ended up against the stone lantern. I guess Grimmed help me. There's something warm splashed over me. <laughs> Change my mind. You don't mean... Was it? Mine's really good. But that's why you like Irish better. My developers multiple games and Irish just did it in one case. To be true, yeah. <laughs> Chad moves. It's fucking awesome. I didn't I didn't know it was at I didn't know that at the time, but I think it was probably blood. Saying that we missed I, I cannot say that last name. When Elise, who was channeling Dahlia, was stabbed in the back by the killer. At that moment, I was paralyzed with fear. I was just sitting there in snow. I'm sure blood got on everything around me. What the fuck? Do you think you think Pearl, like a little spider monkey, just went, get off of Maya, hiya? <laughs> I don't think that would happen. Who the fuck else would What the fuck? I'm a little confused here. There's only two people I can think of right now that was like there besides me and Larry and Pearl, who couldn't be Pearl. What the fuck? <laughs> Spider Pearl exists. Uh, it was Larry. Uh, Larry was too busy going like, whoa, bro, fire. It's so wonderful. Okay, that's when I lost consciousness. Okay. So, the blood wasn't the victims, that's what we know. So that means... Who the fuck got stabbed? Hmm. <laughs> He's the true mastermind. <laughs> Lock that asshole up. Okay, I still ended up against Stone Lantern. Suddenly, someone struck me over the head. Alright, I'm gonna start pressing everything, because this is really- this one's gonna get me. Who else was on the Inner Temple side that night? Well, Sister Bikini, of course, but I remember her saying that Iris would be coming later. One day after the incident, Edgeworth met Bikini at Hotscrew Temple. That means she couldn't be the criminal. So then, did Iris actually come later like she did? Well, uh, let me think. She seems confused. It's probably because she's so tired. No, I'm sure I didn't see her. She must have come while I was preparing for the training. This one struck me over the head. Who did it? Who hit you? Spoken like a true boyfriend. Who did it? Who fucking hit you? I killed him. I didn't see who it was. I was hit from behind. You didn't see the person? But after that, your attacker was in front of you. How could you not see who it was? Let me think for a sec. All right, Phoenix, lay off. I'm sorry, I just can't remember. Maya is really having a hard time. What should I do? Listen, you're strong. Your sister said you're stronger than you look, so come on. Maya, this isn't making sense. Why didn't you see this person? Um, well, let me think. It was, uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. It was dark. That's it. It was dark. It's not good to have too much light around when someone's undergoing spiritual training. Let's so come to think of it. That was, uh, there was an earlier testimony to that effect as well. <laughs> you want Iris and Phoenix so bad? Listen, I kind of want that so bad too, but I feel like we're never going to see Iris again, which is going to make me very sad. <laughs> it was dark in the garden on the night of the crime, which is why she, which is why she didn't see her attacker. I thought maybe she was trying to hide something, but I guess not. Judging by the testimony thus far, the identity of the attacker was most likely the spirit that was channeled by Elise, Dolly Hawthorne. Hmm. Very well. Please continue with your testimony. What happened after you were struck on the head? Can I look at the fucking 
lantern real quick. What do we have on lantern? It was lit the night of the... It was not lit the night of the crime. Okay, cool. Just wanted to know. Wanted to verify that. All right. Stone with the end against the stone lantern. What happened afterwards? My attacker was in front of me, blocking off my escape, I think. You think? After getting hit like that, I was in a state of panic. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> there was only two things rolling around in my mind at the time. Well now, this is beginning to get interesting. I'm sorry, Judge, you got a little heart on there or something? What the fuck's going on with you? He's like, oh, almost murder. Oh, wow. So what were the two things rolling around in your mind? My name is Maya Faye. One plus one equals two. What the fu- what? Is that what you do to, like, calm down? You see, for some crazy reason, I was afraid I was going to lose my memory. I know it's odd considering my life was in danger, but that's how it was. It's not odd at all. Your actions are understandable in the circumstances. So, what did you do then? <laughs> Good start, Maya. Uh, to be real for a second, Capcom's really trying to give us more Iris. Really, for real? Concerned by those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There is a lot of... Sometimes fans go a little too hard on things. Which... May, which might make, like, either a TV show or, like, a fucking game or whatever just a little less than what it could have been. Wink, wink, looking at you, Naruto, you piece of shit. Anyways, biggest, biggest example is fucking Dragon Ball. Looking at you, fucking Goku. I think I screamed, help me. Hmm. Was there a specific reason why fans didn't want to see more Iris? What, was it just because they were shipping Maya or something? Because I can imagine that. I can, say, I can imagine them going like, Maya! You think you screamed? But you're not sure. Listen, I was complete ready. It was dark, and I couldn't see my attacker. Was it a man, a woman, an adult, a child? Was it some evil little Sith Lord coming to kill me? I had no idea. I was scared out of my wits. Believe me, my dear. I'm certain... I'm certain I would have spoiled my uh, spoiled soiled my robes. I thought this person might attack me, so I. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I screamed. I thought that's. I thought it was my last hope. Wow, sounds like poor little Maya really was out of her mind. But I wonder what she meant by last hope. What the fuck did you do? Yeah, what'd you do before that? Wait a minute, Maya. What's this my last hope stuff? Uh, what? What do you mean, your last hope? Don't you fucking turn this on me, Maya. Now, now is not the time for your little cuteness, alright? Say that till after I fucking save you, and then you eat about like five dozen hamburgers. And then you crash on my couch, like you always do. That's what you said. You said my last hope. What? I said what now? Look, you were facing an attacker that you couldn't see, and you screamed, right? You screamed, help me. Oh, Lord, help me! But you testify that you screamed that because you thought it was your last hope. Oh, well, you know. It's like... What you... Uh, what do you call it when that happens? Why, oh, it's not doing so well up there. Oh, yeah. I, uh... That's right. I remember now. I was facing my attacker, but that's not who I was screaming at. Who the fuck was there? What'd you say? Yeah, that's right. It was the person behind my attacker that I was yelling at. That's who I was screaming. Wait, what? That, that's who I was screaming to help. Uh, to, eh. That's who I was screaming to for help. What is it now? I messed up. I didn't mean to let that slip out. Huh? Oh, fucking Maya. What are you doing? <laughs> The problem's not Maya, it's Edgeworth. Oh, what the fuck, really? Yeah, 
sound bites too. They're trying their hard to get rid. What the fuck? What? All right, hold on. I, we can we can save this discussion for later. Cause I gotta know about that shit. They want more Iris, but kick out Edgeworth. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Witness, are you absolutely sure of what you're saying? What do you mean, no? Switch your room. <laughs> the music was fitting for me reading the comment. Behind the attacker, there was another person? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I meant to keep that part a secret. Oh, What have I done? Huh. It takes a ton of pressure to make a diamond. That's what I always say. A ton of pressure. You're in court of law here. You can't make things up or try to hide things in this chamber. Witness, the information you just presented is final to the case. I want you to add it to your testimony. You see a man behind my attacker. You know it was a man. What? Godot, were you there the whole time? Did you fucking... Were you hiding in the bushes? Were you stalking me, cool fucker? A man. What? The fuck are you talking about? Only me and Larry was there. We're only the only two men present, at least to my fucking knowledge. Okay. A man. Who was this man? Well, you see, I couldn't see. Stop fucking lying to me. You couldn't see. I've used this excuse twice now. Well, you know, lantern light isn't very bright. Lantern light, did you say? There's a great big stone lantern in the garden. They always light it when the acolyte is there for the training. Hey, you know what they say, under the lantern, darkness reigns. So, I could see the person that was farthest... <laughs> I could see the person that was farthest away, but not my attacker, who was closer. What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I thought we were trying to find out who the man was. Wouldn't the man be the farthest away? Was the man the attacker? What are you saying, Maya? Okay. See, they wanted to do more. They wanted to do more with Iris, but the fandom is rabid about Edgeworth and Phoenix, and they hate the toxicity so much that they just wanted to leave Edgy behind. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. I see. <laughs> so I couldn't see the person that was. <laughs> Plus, there weren't any other light sources in the garden at that time. Hmm. What the fuck? Did I read that wrong or something? Did, did I just have like a stroke? Alright, whatever, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Alright. Not sure if this is the right answer, but I'm going with it. I'm just gonna slap that. Yeah. So, there was a man standing behind your attacker. Yeah? That man. He's the killer. He stabbed her from behind. He's the one who killed Elise. Otherwise known as Misty Fay, your mother. The killer? Maya? You know who killed your mother, don't you? Uh... What's the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? To be frank, Your Honor, I think she's in shock and quite confused. That's why she hadn't noticed the huge problem with her testimony. Huh? What do you mean? What problem? Maya? On the night of the crime, the stone lantern was out of commission. Huh? What? Don't you quat me. It's true. 
There was no light anywhere in the garden that night. No. <laughs> Maya, you shady bastard, I love you. Oh man, I love her too. Order! Order in court. Miss Godot, explain this. I explain shit. Add the pureness of milk to the perfect clear darkness of coffee stir. That is the state of the witness's mind right now. A cup of cafe. Cafe. I don't know how to say that. I'm not even gonna I'm not French. What the hell? Cafe Oule. Is that even legal? <laughs> Mr. Trite's words are the milk, and you are the spoon. Are you a little spoon or a big spoon? I want to be big spoon. I'm a spoon? I'm no spoony. I'm no spoony bard. I'll have you know. You must have noticed it too, Trite. This witness' mental state is highly unstable right now. It's not hard to understand why she, why she would make a little mistake like that. Sorry, that's not gonna cut it. What did you say? There's truly was no light in the garden. Then there's a fatal contradiction in the witness's last bit of testimony. Nick, don't you nick me? May I? Recall the witness's statement about her attacker. She said that she didn't know if it was a man or a woman, an adult or child. And yet, the witness could describe a person that was standing behind her attacker, and she quite clearly described him as a man. In other words, that would have meant that Maya actually saw a mysterious person, despite it being so dark that she couldn't see the face of her own attacker. Don't you know me? I'm trying to save your life, damn it! Final Fantasy reference. Ooh. <laughs> Order! What the world does this all mean? Are you saying Miss Bay saw the real killer under pitch black conditions? Trite, do you have any idea what you're proposing? How could she have seen in the dark? There was no other light source at the scene. Objection! There's some things that you can only see in the dark, Mr. Godot. Maya, you did see who the killer was in the dark. And now, you're trying to cover for him. Cover? For the man that killed her mother? There's only one conclusion I can draw from this. I'm fucking insane. What's going on here? You know who this man is. Please, Nick. I don't know. I don't know anything. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> Talk a good game, Trite. But let's see if you can walk the walk. It was pitch black, so what could the witness see? I'm calling your bluff. No, Nick, don't. Please, stop. Don't you tell me to stop. Maya's dead set on protecting this guy. The man who murdered Maya's long lost mother. But I can't let him get away with it. I'm a lawyer, an officer of the court. I'm here to find the truth. Uh, caveman brain hurt. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wright. Time to show us what you got. Show me what you got. Who is this person that you say face on the darkness? What the fuck? Was it was it good dough somehow? Was his fucking visor lighting up the night sky? <laughs> Edgeworth. He was in a different country. What the fuck? Can't be Larry, could it? Said it was someone that we didn't see in the morning. saying Larry. Are you being for real, Bob? Are you actually being for real? Yeah, I'm like, what the hell? Can't be Larry. Was it Godot? Did he fucking just like... Like a predator? <laughs> just fucking 
heard his little snarls in the woods with his fucking cloaking device. The fuck? is going on. What? <laughs> that would be terrifying. Larry's just like a fucking crazy ninja. Just hiding in the darkness. Stabbing motherfuckers. I, I have no idea. Someone that we didn't see. Well, I mean... Gado did kind of just show the fuck up, really, like when we were doing the investigations, but, you know, the bridge was out, so there was no way he would be able to get there. Gumshoe was there, Larry was there, Miles was there. What the fuck? What the hell is going on? <laughs> I have no idea! My attorney badge. Did... No, that wouldn't make sense. I'm just thinking, is it possible that fucking Phoenix just, like, somehow made it across and unconsciously just went and just fucking protected her? And then <laughs> went back into the river? <laughs> no. Uh... <laughs> you walking in the dark, you see three glowing lights, next thing you know. Oh, man. Yeah, I really don't know either, because what the fucking what? How the hell? Cracks, crime photo. Crime photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Worn by Elise. Morgan Faye. was the person that you say I, maybe this would work because it doesn't say a specific person it just said it wasn't the victim uh, it looks like you've proven a well known fact the fact that people really can't see in the dark yeah 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 I know fucking hell man Who would she protect? Who was the person that you say my face on the dark? What the fuck? I'm gonna just start. I, I honestly, I'm just gonna start randomly doing things. Just randomly doing things. It was a good doe. He did it. <laughs> what the? F fucking god <laughs> what for real just fucking in the dark just brrr, fucking just like it's just pitch blackness you see someone walking up to you with a knife and then behind them you just see three lights brrr. fuck it was a joke <laughs> because it was pitch black miss Faye was able to recognize the killer easily i'm sure the court would like to see it for itself now this is <laughs> see see for itself how this is possible, yes? What? But how do you propose this show is something like that? It's easy. We just need to recreate the conditions of that night. Conditions? Your Honor, the defense officially requests. <laughs> it doesn't make sense? What do you mean it doesn't make sense? His fucking visor glows in the dark! <laughs> because he's bad at seeing shit. He needs night vision, right? That, and he couldn't see the fucking blood on the goddamn pillar for some reason. Like a weirdo, and I don't know what that has to do with anything, but... Eh. Maybe because he only sees red. <laughs> That's all the light... Uh, eh. That all the lights in this courtroom be turned off. 
What? This is, but it can't be. Huh. Fucking evil ass motherfucker. <laughs> so how the fuck? Wait, 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 wait. Did we meet him on the other side of the bridge in the morning? Did we meet him at Hazakura Temple or? No, we met. We met him after Gumshoe fixed the bridge, right? Can't see the color red on the white background. In the inner temple. Okay. For some reason, I don't know. I For some reason in my mind, I was like, did we meet him on the other side? Okay. It was a week ago since I last played this, so. And even before that, I think. <laughs> even before that, that was like a week ago, too. All right. It was a nice bit of a deduction trite. Well, everyone. This is the man Maya saw on the night of the murder. Order. Prosecutor Godot. What's the meaning of this? I'm a fucking filthy murderer. I liked it. <laughs> Surely you must be shocked to hear yourself accused of such a thing. Why aren't you denying it? You're asking the wrong person. What do you mean by that? If you got a question, ask the witness. That's my one rule. Well, Maya, how about it? What you saw what you saw that night. Was it three glowing red lights? Well, witness, answer the question. You're wrong. Stop it. Stop it. He knows what he did. And it wasn't a bad thing, but he knows what he did. I never saw that. Maya? I thought the person that stabbed my mother was a man. For a totally different reason. What? Objection. Stop your chattering, Your Honor. Ch chattering? If it's worth asking, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. All right. Well then, let's continue with the testimony. Please tell us how you knew the killer was a man. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't realize it until after I woke up, but... Come on, Maya. When I came to, I was just lying there on the training hall floor. By the time I got back to the garden, the place was totally changed. The torches were lit, and the blood, the blood, the body was gone. And all of the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up, too. Since the person did all that work alone, I just assumed it was a man. Hmm. So it was after the crime took place that the witness came thinking the killer was a man. Yes. That's right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. No need to apologize. It's Mr. G it's <laughs> fuck. It's as Mr. Godot say. You're utterly exhausted. It's only natural that you would be a little confused. Also, if you consider the situation you described, it doesn't seem too much of a stretch to assume the culprit was a man. Mr. Wright, proceed with the cross examination. Fucking hell. All right, Maya, I already see the contradiction in that statement. I love you, Maya, and I hope you don't hate me for it. I'm just doing what I have to do to protect you, just like he did what he had to do. All right? Carefully clean up, too. Now I'm just going to press this just to see if I get more information on it. Get her to say something specific. So you were saying the killer cleaned up the snow. It did look really odd. That's where all the blood was at. The snow was removed and an unnatural looking rectangle shaved around the lantern. There were a lot of shovels around the inner temple, but they were all really heavy, way too heavy for me to use. An odd, an odd fellow indeed, this killer. Why on earth would anyone want to wanna take snow away? Well, there's one thing that I can think of. Didn't you say that 
<laughs> Wait. Did you say that a lot of the victim's blood sprayed onto the snow? Yeah. The area I collapsed in ended up being splattered. In other words, the killer's purpose was to hide the body slowly. The body slowly. Why did I even say that? What the fuck is wrong? I'm a little tired. <laughs> to hide the bloody snow. I think that... <laughs> I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Hmm, perhaps. However, there's something that bothers me. If the killer just wanted to hide the snow with blood on it, there was no need to remove that amount. That's true. He could have scooped up just the snow that was stained with blood. He can't see the blood. It looks like there are some mysterious luck behind his issues. But... I think this will help explain them. Hmm. Alright, well, I wanted to fucking... I wanted to see if I can get her to say, like, the area itself was clean, but... Ah, come on. Ah, come on. Come on. Come on. What the fuck? Alright. Naturally, the killer must have done it right. Yes, I think so. But why did the killer tamper with the crime scene like that? There must have been something that the killer desperately wanted to hide. I... I don't know. You're lying! Looks like she doesn't have enough confidence. I think I need to gather some more information before I ask her again. Okay, well, hold on. Let me just... I think I saved before I even fucking did this. So let me do this first. Fucking go back. There's a lot of shells around, blah blah. Yeah, yeah. There's blood. What's that smell? He's blood. Alright. Now I'm gonna go back. Gotta do the double press. Actually, killer must have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, really? Do I gotta press, like, everything else and come back? But Alright. Torches were lit? Yes. That's how I noticed that the whole scene had changed. I'm gonna say there was a killer who lit the torches. I mean, who else could it be? Killer probably lit them since it was- since it would be impossible to do any cover-up work in the dark. However, if that's true, there's one thing that still bothers me. Why did the killer go to the effort of moving the body? That's true. I'd like to see how that would be of any advantage to the killer. The only one who would gain anything from that would be... The only person that was at the inner temple, Maya. Very well. Let me hear some more about the conditions of the crime scene. So Iris wasn't helping her sister, she was helping Goodell. So, you're saying that you never saw the killer, right? Yes. But earlier, you barely could have stated that. You saw a man behind your attacker. Nick, I'm sorry. You have certainly went through a lot of trouble. Moving the body by pendulum, manipulating the crime scene. But for what purpose? Why do all that? Maybe Vi knows more than she's letting on. <laughs> another reason to another reason on the pile while Iris is best girl. Okay. So you lost consciousness when you were in the garden, is that right? Yes, I think. Thing happened when the victim was stabbed. So then the person that carried out Wow. Well, the person that carried you into the inner temple could only have been the killer. That's what I think too. So the killer carried Maya into the inner temple. All right, Maya, give up the goods. Huh. The truth is, when I saw the crime scene, I felt something. You did? Yes. I felt like the killer was hiding the evidence for me. For my sake. What? I need it for you. 
Everyone knew that I was the only one in the inner temple that night. If Sister Bikini had come back and looked at the garden, she may have thought that you had done it. Nope, she definitely would have thought so. And you're saying that's why the killer cleaned up this, the crime scene to make it look like nothing had happened? Yes, I'm sure of it. Well, that's certainly an important piece of information. I want you to add it to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. If I must. <laughs> Alright, I think it's for my sake that the killer cleaned up the evidence of what happened. And then that's when we use the pillar, right? Because we're like, well, you're fucked up. Get on fucked up. The body of Elise was carried all the way to Hunsker Temple Courtyard. Then at the garden, the real scene of the crime, the snow that, was, the snow that we suspect was covered in blood, was scooped up and removed. The reason... <clears throat> the reason to believe that all this was done... Fuck! I'm yawning again. Jesus. <laughs> the reason to believe all this was done in an attempt to hide the true crime scene. However, there's still one matter that seems somewhat odd. Oh... And what would that be? You must have figured it out by now, Mr. Goodell. It's the message written on blood on the lantern. It was written very clearly on the white stone lantern. Maya. Hmm? If the killer was so motivated to protect Maya from suspicion, then why didn't they wipe the writing off the lantern? You're right. But, Mr. Wright, isn't it a fact that the killer was trying to cover up the crime scene? Indeed, but it doesn't make much sense to move the body and remove this. <laughs> it makes much sense to move the body and remove the bloody snow, then not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all, the bloody writing. The fucking name, no doubt. But, if that's the case, do you have any explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior? <laughs> Why would this... I cannot speak. Why would this killer move the body and remove all that snow? But then leave the bloody writing on the lantern. I don't know what the killer's plan was, but it's a fact that the killer left the writing on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. Why did the killer leave the message... Uh, with the dead, the dead, the, you know what I mean. <laughs> to pin the crime. The killer didn't notice it. Well, blind son of a... I, I, maybe I should... I will take that statement back. I feel like that is me attacking a group of people. <laughs> Prosecutor... <laughs> I apologize. Prosecutor Goodell, earlier in this trial, you gave me some... Fuck. You gave me some good advice. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Maybe you're not as dumb as you thought. Damn right. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that the crime had occurred there. If that's the case... Yawning again. <laughs> that would... It would have left the bloody writing on the stone lantern on purpose. Therefore, it must mean that they didn't notice it. Now that doesn't make any sense. The torches were all lit and everything. There's no way any normal person would miss something as glaring as that. You're right. This is no way any normal person would. What? What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in the incident. Who could have missed seeing the bloody writing altogether? Who would that be? Who's the person that could have failed to notice the bloody writing? Bum, bum, bum! Mr. Godot. This is what you said yesterday. My eyesight's pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. Can't see everything. Isn't that correct, Mr. Goodell? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I would like the court to think, uh, to think back to a moment it was first. <laughs> to the moment it was first present presented. This lantern, something's written on it. Why? It's written in blood! Nonsense. It's a lantern. It's as clean as a whistle. Hmm. Mr. Godot, just admit it. 
there are certain colors you can't see, correct? Well, maybe because I'm not a racist son of a bitch like you. <laughs> you can't see red on white black, uh, black rounds? <laughs> what the fuck? You can't see red on white backgrounds, can you? That's right. We went through this once before. During the poisoning case at Tres Bien, this is the apron that the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. And, some, and somehow, uh, somehow spilled coffee on it. I totally forgot about this case, by the way. Not the case itself, but I forgot about this moment. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. How did you explain the blood stain on the court? Blood stain? What blood stain? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You could see the coffee on the white apron, but you couldn't see the ketchup because it was red. Huh. Strange. In a black and white photo, those letters would have appeared black to me. I wonder. Why am I the only one that can't see them? So then, Mr. Godot, are you admitting it? Are you admitting that you... Wow. I totally even forgot about the fucking talisman. Oh my god. Are you admitting that you can't see the red writing on... Uh, writing? The red writing on the lantern? Please, let's just end the fucking trial. Hey, Gramps! Did you know? That the reason why I don't drink red tea. Yeah, sure. I wasn't sure about it until now, but I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Goodell is the murderer? He's not a murderer person. I mean, he did murder, but he, he was helping. But there's no going back now. Finally, figure out the truth. He's a good guy. Mr. Godot, the defense at this time formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Lise, also known as Miss Misty Fay. Hard to believe this many, uh, this many. Hard to believe this may be true. However, once again, Mr. Wright has brought up a disconcerting fact about you. <laughs> Please, just end the trial. Just make sure you don't fill out the in indict. Make sure you don't fill out the indictment in red ink, Gramps. Indictment, my bad. Come on, how does a little graffiti make me into a killer? Besides, it's not like it's my name that's written there. I'm certain that the killer wasn't able to see the color red. This is rich. Do go on, Trite. The answer is right there at the crime scene. The snow. Snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If he wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not take out just that area? Yes. Sorry, excuse me. Yes. Why didn't he take just that area? Could it be? Yes, the killer couldn't see the red blood that had seeped into the snow. And so, he had to remove all the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood had landed, so he removed the whole area. Isn't it a little more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? The lanterns were lit. Not a chance. The torches were all lit. He would have been able to see just fine. It seems that once again, this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Can you explain this, Mr. Godot? Maya, stop! Wait, wait a minute. Maya? What is it, witness? Mr. Godot isn't the killer. After all, he didn't even come to the inner temple until two days after the murder took place. He didn't show up until after the old bridge got fixed up. Maya? Didn't the bridge get fixed up in one day? Can't testify to something like that. Why? What do you mean? After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. Yeah, that's right. That too. 
She didn't? I'm afraid I don't follow. Are you senile, old man? We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, that's right. Please, Your Honor. Let me add that to my testimony. Nick, please listen to me. Maya? I feel like they're gonna make me do a big choice here. Do you plan to cover for Godot no matter what the cause? If that's the case, then I got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're gonna hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Nicely done, Trey. Very well. Let's hear the witness's testimony. Please tell us what happened at the Inner Temple after the murder. Yes, sir. After I woke up, I began channeling, and my spirit left me, as it were. But little Pearly was there at the Inner Temple, too. Pearly was also stuck on the Inner Temple side that night. The next morning, she looked around, but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time. He found Pearls first and cheered her right up. Who is this Pearly? My little cousin, Pearl Faye. Hmm. So, when did you hear about this? Oh, just a while ago, when I was in the medical office. Terribly sorry. But what you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as a testimony. What? Come on! Probably would never tell a lie. She's way more honest person than I'll ever be. Real smart, Maya. You always know the best thing to say when you're under oath. <laughs> Prosecution has no objection. We believe the witness. Miss Gradell. Let's just move on with the cross examination if the defense has no objections. It's highly unusual, but. Well, Mr. Wright. Let's get this cross examination started. Both of them are just like flexing now. <laughs> they're just at the point where they're like, we all know the answer. We're just fucking flexing. Oh, fucking hell, man. Next morning, she looked around and couldn't find anyone. Next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when the bell arrived in her temple for the first time. Alright. Also, he stopped drinking coffee. Oh, that's good. So, it was your first time on the Inner Temple side, Mr. Goodell? Hmm? That's funny. I'm imagining things, or did the defense ask me a question? Mr. Wright, please save your questions for the witness. I'll go fuck off. Alright. What you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as a testimony. Those are your words, Your Honor. Touché, Mr. Wright. Oh well. What do you have to say, Mr. Godot? He is drinking coffee, liar. <laughs> Hot nights and even hotter coffee, that's what I always say. It, is that a, that's a sexual in innuendo. <laughs> Coming for some warm coffee. If it hadn't... <laughs> if, I, eh, if it hadn't been for this case, I never would have visited there. Freezing cold temperature. Uh, wow. Freezing cold temple in the mountains. I think I'll pass. So, he yeah, had never visited Huskrew Temple or the Inner Temple, huh? Hmm. You want to say something, Trite? In any case, I have to find Kraken Godot's armor. Well, I cross examine Maya, that is. <laughs> I ain't lying. That never happened. <laughs> Very well. Please go on with your testimony. After fixing the bridge, the police came over to the inner temple. Yes. Found Pearly first and cheered her right up. This fucking lie, because I was there. I'm the one who cheered her up, you liar. He cheered her up? That's what Pearly said. She said she was very nice older... Wait, what? She said he was very nice older gentleman. Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Goodell. Here I was, thinking you were nothing more than a coffee addict. Huh. <laughs> Cut it out, you're making me blush. 
this guy is really getting on my nerves. More ways than one. The truth is, there aren't that many places to look in the inner temple side. The policemen were all busy going over the garden with fine tooth comb, so I decided to carry out an investigation in my own way. Dot style. That's right, I said good dot. I'm going back to do dot. I like it. I'm the same way. I like to hand down verdicts in my own way. Judge style. Hmm, maybe I should ask some questions. Phoenix style. <laughs> Phoenix style. Alright. Cheering up pearls? What was she sad about? So you cheered up pearls, huh? When I found a little girl, the first thing she asked was about her cousin, Maya Faye. Really? Why oh, you seem surprised, Maya? I thought you heard it all from her. The bridge had burnt down and she was huddled up in a tiny shack with no heat. Even though she must have had a truly terrifying night out there, she asked about you before she said a thing about herself. Surely. I noticed that you <laughs> weren't. Eh. I noticed that you weren't anywhere on the inner temple side, but I couldn't find couldn't find an enemy to tell her that. So I gave her my last cup. Give coffee to a fucking what? <laughs> With milk and sugar to hide the bitterness, but not the super caffeine. Imagine Alpha Counter on the edge of the screen. What? You mean a coffee counter? <laughs> yeah, coffee counter. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Alright. Where the fuck was I? What a sweet story. Oh, you suck it up, you little bitch. He had a... He had a thermos of coffee? Why doesn't that surprise me? There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Godot when the murder was taken place? He must have already been at the inner temple when it happened. Otherwise, he could have killed the lynx. Mm -hmm. Next morning, she looked around and couldn't find anyone. Next day, when the bridge started to finish, it's very properly. What the fuck, man? <laughs> must, have, <laughs> must have been a couple of terrifying few minutes. Pearl just bouncing around like a nemesis river dragon. Oh my god. Fucking. She's bouncing around with her little fucking Sith powers going everywhere. Fucking shooting everything with lightning. Pearl didn't hear the sound of them working on the bridge. What do you mean? I was just wondering why, why she would stay in a prep room. If it was me. I'd at least go out and wave right at the foot of the bridge. Oh, well, probably said she was sleeping at that time. She said she was so scared during the night that she couldn't sleep, but only woke up a bunch of times. Poor little girl. All alone like that. Well, we know that she had at least one friend in St. Kevin, Dolly Hawthorne, who was busy battling with the trick off. She couldn't let anyone see her. So, she would have had a she went out and showed herself the pearls. What happened after the bridge was finally fixed? Okay. <laughs> after seeing after seeing that, it must have been electric. Now. I like it. Fucking hell, man. She searched the entire inner temple side and end to end. Well, you see, Lily gets pretty scared when she's alone. And that What? <laughs> you telling me the nine year old who constantly takes the train to and fro her her village by herself gets scared when she's alone? Part of me don't believe that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Alright. And there weren't that many places to look. She said that she even went back and forth several times. The inner temple side has two structures. Fuck! The training hall in the spirit room. Oh god, I'm yawning like a crazy bitch. There's also a storage shack, I think. That's about it. There's a storage shack, too. Of course, was looking for other people, right? Would she have really examined a storage shack all that carefully? Well, if it was me, that would be the first place I would investigate. Well, it's not you. 
So, that means it's possible that someone may have been hiding in the storage shed. Alright. Hmm. Don't think this contradiction I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a contradiction right now, to be honest. I'm just fucking getting as much information as I can. So, what did you think Pearl slept that night? In the spare room, next to the training hall. There's a rule that you can't enter the training hall during the Acolyte's training, but even so, why did she go into the inner temple in the first place? She knew that Pearl became very worried about Maya. She knew that the spirit training... <clears throat> she knew that the spiritual training was about to undergo was very intense. Pearl was supposed to channel Dolly a home for one, but she couldn't do it. That's why she headed to the inner temple. However, Dolly Hawthorne was already there, possessing the body of Elise. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. Okay. Alright, let's see. I'm trying to prove... This would help me with anything right now, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think that would help me with anything. and try to line up. You said you conduct an investigation on your own. Did you find anything? Looks like my investigations went about as well as yours, right? After all, I did miss the bloody writing on the lantern. Well, I didn't miss it, so speak for yourself, Goggles. Eh, the only odd thing I discovered was the beauty in the training hall. Beauty? Misty Fay, naturally. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb surrounded by the hue of aroma of Western taste. Western taste. Could he find a stranger way to describe gravy? So, from there you headed to the prep room. Wait a sec. What did you say just now? I just found a proverbial weak spot. There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Goodell when the murder was taking place? Must have already been an Afghan level. Hmm. I'm gonna be honest, I was like, my mind was like, just. I'm at the point where the sun starts setting in my brain, you know what I mean? I'm getting a little tired here. <laughs> so I'm not even paying attention as much as I should. Fuck, I didn't mean to do that. My bad. Shit. Alright. Just wanna ask that again because of your. First time, down pearls, blah blah blah. Yeah. I'm just going to ask that again, so I can actually pay the fuck attention this time. Start getting to a part, you know, start getting to the moment where you just go through it without thinking. Alright. Uh-huh. Yeah, huh? Beauty. Misty Fay, naturally. Okay, here's my question, though. How the fuck would you know what she looked like? If you've never been there. So... 
am I gonna, do I gotta, okay, hold on. Now my question is, am I doing a double, a double press here? Is that what I'm doing? I'm gonna try doing the double press, and if that doesn't work, I'm gonna use the gravy on the fucking, on the, I'm gonna use gravy on this, if double press don't work. So, it was your first time in the Inner Temple site. Hmm? That's funny. Imagine things, or did the defense ask me a question? Yeah, you son of a bitch. Okay. Cliche. Yeah, we've read all this before. So you never visit the temple, or the inner temple. Yeah, I want to say something. Just like I thought. He's lying. If his first visit to the inner temple was really after the incident, he shouldn't know about the piece of evidence. Very well, go on with your testimony. Oh, so I'm just gonna... Alright, I'll just throw it at that one. Gotta save just in case it turns out to be wrong. There you go. Mr. Godot! First time you crossed Dusky Bridge and went into the Inner Temple it was long before the murder took place. What do you say? Why do you say that? Because he just made one fl <laughs> One fatal slip up. The hanging scroll and the tree. Hanging scroll. But Mr. Godot's right. The scroll shows a picture of my mother. Maya, I know you know who it is. But here's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired two days after the murder, the hanging scroll in the training hall looked like this. <laughs> What's that wonderfully ridiculous? What? How can you smell a photo? <laughs> the morning. What the fuck? The morning after the crime, someone covered it with gravy. Gravy? But why gravy, Nick? Because gravy was much more than a condiment to the culprit. Well, Mr. Goodell, if you cannot, eh, you cannot see the hanging scroll until after the murder, why would you have any knowledge that it was Misty Fat? Stop it, Maya! In the fucking trial! I'm tired! I want to go to bed! <laughs> yes? Take another look at the hanging scroll. Look at the top. There's a crest there. And that's the mark of the master, correct? Exactly. So... If you know the meaning of the mark, then you would guess that it was a picture of Misty Faye there. True, but Mr. Goodell described that he was underneath. Wait, what? But he was underneath like this. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western taste. Oh. Yes, it's possible that he knew the cre what the crest meant. However, he couldn't have known what she was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing Japanese clothing. Mr. Godot, on the day of the murder, you were hiding at the Inner Temple long before the crime took place. Question is, why the fuck were you there? What was you doing? Were you called out? Can I ask you just one little thing, Trite? What is it? It's all a theory of yours. All rests on a certain assumption. That I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. That's right. Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak onto the crime scene. Of course Mr. Godot knew about the plan. Of course you knew about the fucking plan. Of course you knew about the goddamn plan. I'm fucking tired. I want to go to bed now. Huh? What do you say? What do you mean what I'm saying? It's really possible that another person knew that plan? Of course. The only person who would know the boyfriend of, of the daughter. Whoa! Mr. Right, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> Alright. Another person knew the plan. It's really possible that another person knew the plan. Well, I mean, uh, Pearl knew, Morgan knew, Evil Bitch knew. Magazine featuring 
I mean, Iris knew. Uh, uh. <laughs> Not a person? Oh, fuck me. Open once before. Oh, it was open once before. Oh. Um. Forgot. This crime was actually planned over a year ago. Thanks for the help on that one, because I was a little... Uh, I, would, I wasn't even thinking about it. Man, good thing I called this evidence useless earlier, huh? <laughs> Morgan Fay authored the plan for her daughter's future. And these instructions were hidden somewhere in the Fay Manor for a year. However, by the time for the Pearls found these instructions, they had already been unsealed. Unsealed? Yes, the killer had read these instructions long before Pearls ever found them. That's how he knew the crime was to take place in the Inner Temple. Oh. We still insist... <laughs> he still insists this crafty killer is me. This handsome, devilish, crafty killer is me. <laughs> you bet I do. But you just said that the instructions were hidden. That's right. Mr. Godot couldn't have known where the instructions were hidden. Fucking god, he really wanted to know. He had one chance to find out. Fucking god, lose my goddamn mind. <laughs> yes? Who was that? During a visit. A visit? Morgan Fay told her daughter Pearl about where the instructions were hidden. During one of her visits to the detention center. By herself. <laughs> because she's a nine year old. That would be the only time for someone to have learned where they were hidden. Eavesdropping on a visit at a detention center. They're fucking criminals! Yeah. <laughs> fucking eavesdropping. Of course you eavesdrop. Fucking keys in the cake. <laughs> it would... God damn it. It would... It would... Fuck! I lost my ability to read. It could be a range of you or someone with easy, with easy access. Out there. He's the third coming of Christ. Of course he's not the devil. He's a guardian angel. Like, for example, a prosecutor such as Mr. Goodell. Order, Mr. Goodell. You're under fire again. This murder could have been carried out without prior knowledge. And you. You were the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder. Oh my god, can you just... Get out. I love you. Just give up already. <laughs> Humans are afraid of the dark. Yes, they are. And at, time... and at the same time, we're fascinated and bewitched by it. Yes, we are. Maybe that's why humans drink the darkness that is coffee. I don't think that's it. But that is why we eat crazy things like charcoal ice cream. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's ice cream, but it's, but it's black. Sorry for always asking. What does that mean? It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case eavesdropped on a conversation during a jail visit where he learned of, of a hidden plan for a crime. After discovering the plans, he hid in, 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 he hid it, he hid in the inner temple and waited for the crime to occur. Then he ultimately took the person's life. And he did all that just to protect this witness. That's right. If you're accusing me of this crime, I have to ask you, why would I do this? Because you're a beautiful man and we all love you. Now you're gonna fucking go to jail for it for some reason. This girl is nothing but a stranger to me. That's a fucking lie. I got no reason to go through this kind of trouble to protect her. Purple ice cream hits different in a good way. I never had it, despite the fact that I live in New York. Never had it. Always wanted to, and then, what was it? Did they fucking, they stopped serving it because they're like, it links to cancer or some shit, like everything in the known universe? Like, come on, guys, fucking, just put a warning label on it. Fucking, people out here still smoking cancer sticks. Like, calm down. We all drink orange juice, that leads to cancer. And what you see, I'm currently not the type of, uh, not the type to rescue the damsel in distress. <laughs> yeah, living gives you cancer. That's bullshit. Uh, the killer behavior is certainly extreme. 
for lack of a better word. It wasn't the ice cream we saw, it was activated charcoal, right? That was the thing. It was also like, for some reason, activated charcoal was like a fucking, like a food trend for a while. Even considering that the killer wanted to protect this witness life, his behavior is still a little too unnatural. However, you have a good reason, didn't you, Mr. Godot? An unshakable reason that forced you to protect this witness at all costs. I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Maya? I guess you were doing your best to cover for Godot. For the same reason, huh? Okay, Trey, I'm all ears. Because that's what I got. Can't use my eyes. It's very simple. My Faye is a lot more than just a stranger to you. What if we found out that Mia was just like married this whole time? That'd be some crazy shit. What's this? There's one person who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and my Faye together. Oh, fuck. He's absolutely tied to save the damsel in distress. Of course he is. That's a very... <laughs> There's a very good reason why Maya Faye's life is so precious to you. After all. She is Mia Faye's only sister. Mia? Faye? You once worked alongside her. That was when you were a defense attorney. Wait a second here. Miss Godot is a defense attorney. With your... With your... Eh... With your honors piercing your intellect, you must have figured it out by now. The real name of this man who calls himself Godot. His real name is... Diego Armando. Isn't that right? <laughs> the Latino husbando. Oh, yes. The last time someone called me by that name was over six years ago. Oh my god, Armando. Armando! Oh, por favor, Armando, please. It should, Your Honor. All of this is related to a single case. A case in which a convict named Terry Falls killed himself. And Maya had a sweet fucking bang. Not Maya, my bad, Mia. Fuck. Why are you, why are your names gotta be all fucking the same and shit? Stop it. Stop with that shit. It's <laughs> confusing enough you already got... Same fucking last name. First time in court, the tragic, <laughs> the tragic outcome left deep wound in her heart. She knew that behind it all was a heartless, scheming, demoness, fucking demon. Called it. <laughs> but in the end, Mia couldn't tear off that disguise. However, there was one man who reached out to help her. Oh, Diego. A senior defense attorney at the office where Mia worked. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Flaws killed himself. Yeah, I went back to calling him Flaws. You can't stop me. Mia! You can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry. I. What would be awesome if Mia just went like, Why the fuck did you do that? And I, I fucking got glass in my hair and shit. What the hell? Not glass, like porcelain or roof. You know, I mean, like a coffee everywhere, you son of a bitch. Some of your blood is on my clothes. <laughs> the only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. I was moved by her. The way she put her faith in her clients, that pure sweetheart of hers. That's why I can never forgive Dolly Hawthorne. Mia and I thoroughly investigated the fake kidnapping incident. Then one fateful day, Dahlia wanted to meet with me. It has been six months since the trial. We meet in the courthouse cafeteria. I just remembered, six years ago, right here in the courthouse, you were poisoned. Even I didn't see it coming. Dahlia Hawthorne slipped some poison into my coffee. She fucked me up. Some newspapers at the time called it murder. But very little information about the case was released to the press. But you weren't dead at all. No official reports uh, ever actually. No official reports ever actually called it a murder. It was just in a deep, deep coma. 
Oh, I was just in a deep, deep coma. I see. My body shut down. My life became nothing but a long, deep sleep. The woman's poison did a real number on my central nervous system. I lost my sight, and all of my hair turned white due to the damage of <laughs> damage it caused. And then my eyes turned green, and my fucking skin turned pale, and my lips were red. And then I went, I woke up, first things I said was, why so serious? <laughs> Apparently it was a miracle that I ever regained consciousness. Five years have passed since I drank that poisoned brew. Then one morning my eyes flew open from the smell of the director's cup of co directors, the doctor's cup of coffee. Five years. You were asleep for five years? I mean, <laughs> that's nothing but a fucking, fucking blow in the fucking bushes for, uh, or good old Venom Snake. <laughs> How long was Snake in the coma for? Fucking nine years? <laughs> and the worst possible news was waiting for me. Mia Fey was dead. From the very moment I opened my eyes, I had already lost everything I thought I had. The woman I loved had been murdered, and the woman I loathed had been sentenced to death. The woman you loathe? The one that fucking poisoned you. The one who spiked my scalding hot coffee, Dahlia Hawthorne. <laughs> sure, is now green instead of red to reflect this change. Got a white tie, too. Beautiful. He's a good guy now. It's, it's fucking, it's just the god. It's Star Wars. Here we go about the Star Wars again. Another time, another time to talk about Star Wars during fucking Phoenix Wright. You can tell he's a good guy now, because it's green. <laughs> good old Mia. She got her revenge before she checked out. In the end, there wasn't anyone waiting for me when I woke up. That's so sad. That's great, Maya. I'm tired. <laughs> I want to go to sleep. For someone like me, for someone who had slept away their best days, there was only two reasons left to live. And it was for two reasons that I decided to become a prosecutor. If I may ask, what were those two reasons? The first was you, Trite. Alright, motherfucker. You're a good guy now. We got your backstory. Can you call me my goddamn name? If I hadn't drank that stupid poison, Mia Fey never would have died, much as less uh, much less the way she did. It's not my fault. You were the only one who was there to protect her. I wasn't there. She was doing shit by herself and she never told me. But you let her die, it was your fault. It wasn't like that. I wanted to see for myself what kind of man you really were. That's why you became a prosecutor. My other reason was for living. My other reason for living... She, uh, <clears throat> she goes by the name of Mia Fe. Now I called her Mia. Mia Fe. You mean me? Oh, this is a new soundtrack. I like this. You were the only, the only way I could make up for my sins not saving Mia. One year ago, when the Korean village incident was resolved, it was obvious that Morgan Fey was planning something. Whatever her evil plan was, I was determined to stop it. My role as prosecutor put me in the perfect position to do something about her. That's how you overhead Pearl's visits with Morgan at the detention center. I knew that the time was drawing near. Since I knew the plan, I thought I could follow it. My goal was to outwit the plan. I thought I could do it. I could keep that girl from being caught up in it. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. If Pearls hadn't known that the actual purpose of the plan was to kill Maya, she never would have helped out. Oh my god, I fucking... <laughs> the sun is setting over here! His color palette is inverse. Yep. He always was a good guy. Damn right he was. Finally, the day of the plan was drawing near. I contacted both my accomplices. Accomplices? Iris of Hanskira Temple and Misty Fay. How the fuck did you get her information? I especially needed to help I especially needed the help of Iris. She was to take the fall in my backup plan in case we couldn't control Pearl Fay. What? How did you contradict my mother? Contradict? How did you contact my mother? She had been missing for almost 20 years. Officially, yes. What? What do you mean, officially? You've heard about it, haven't you? About the strong ties between the main family and the government? 
Now that you mention it, Bikini did say something to that effect. She said that the Master of the Curian had a great authority. Even without her official position, Misty Face still wielded a great influence. The police have been keeping an eye on her movements all this time. That's how I was able to contact her. Again, because of my position as a prosecutor. So my mother was cooperating with you? And don't ever forget, no matter how far from, from you she was, she never stopped thinking about you. She was always, that's why. I knew she would do anything to protect you. If you want to know how strong her resolve to protect you was, go to the staff. Her staff? The one with the sword in it? The day the plan was to be carried out, wait, what? The day the plan was to be carried out arrived soon enough. We met the first time at Hotskura Temple. That's when your mother showed me her special staff. I realized it then, just how far she was willing to go. She was ready to use that sword to protect you from Morgan Faye if necessary. Yes, even if it meant paying the ultimate price. I'm sad now. <laughs> that night, the night of the crime, there was just one way to stop Morgan's evil plan. You mean pearls, don't you? Pearl Patine, you did it again. She's the mastermind of it all. We had to make sure she didn't channel Dahlia Hawthorne. Well, Pearl, what are you gonna do tonight? Well, um, if you like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some book, uh, books together. We thought we could prevent her from playing the part in Morgan's play, uh, play, plan, but she never showed up. She was worried and followed me in the inner temple. That was the thing we were... <laughs> oh, fuck. That was the thing we were most afraid of. And that's why Misty Faye had to do the channel herself. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne into her own body. What? What do you mean? If she channeled the spirit first, then Pearls wouldn't be able to do it herself. As master of the Curane, Misty's powers were supreme. So that's how it went down. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne so that Pearl Faye wouldn't be able to. I mean, I mean, we kind of, I, I think I kind of said that earlier. <laughs> My role in the plan was to make sure no one was going to hurt my effect. That's why I hid myself in the inner temple. Just in case you needed to be saved from Dahlia Hawthorne. Anyways, that's all I'm going to admit to. Right? There's no... There's an eh. There's no doubt about it. You're a great defense attorney. Then call me my fucking name. But, you're going to have to do the rest yourself. Fucking hell... Background leading up to this incident has been laid bare. There's just one question remaining, Mr. Wright. Who killed the victim? <gasps> there are only two possible suspects now. Maya Faye. And I'm sad to say, Mr. Bordeaux. Well, it's right. You're the real deal finish this thing once and for all. So it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can finish this on your own. No, Nick. Don't do it. Maya. I heard the whole thing. My sister in the, in the medical office. That's why I have to protect Mr. Godot. I can't do it. I can't testify against him. After all, he's the man who put his life on the line to protect Mia. And me too. I know that. Nick. Don't you nick me. But even so, it doesn't absolve him of his crimes. It wasn't really a crime, per se. Please, Maya, testify. Miss Faye, your testimony, please. This is the final testimony. Oh, God, please. Don't bother trying to hide anything, because I'll know. I want to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. I'm sure you're right. I'm ready now, Nick. All right, young lady. Tell us about the moments before you lost consciousness. What exactly happened in the time of the murder? Motherfucker. I'm way past my stream time, by the way. 
Just before it happened, I think I saw some red lights, three of them. I thought I asked for help, but just when I was, just then I was splattered with blood. She wasn't dead though, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly, the red lights went out, and the whole area was dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. But after that, Dolly collapsed, and I lost consciousness. These red lights. I thought you said you don't remember seeing them. I'm sorry. I thought I saw them, but then they disappeared all of a sudden. Huh. Things break, right? Even the best theories. Who was that that stabbed Misty Gray? It looks like you can see, you still can't prove that. I was telling the truth this time. I know it. The rest is up to me. Well then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your final cross-examination. I shall do that. This is the last testimony, 100% sure. Yeah, watch me take like an hour just to do it. All right, just where I have it, I think I saw some red light through them. He wasn't dead, though. He was struck back at the enemy behind him. Suddenly, the red lights out. The whole area was dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. Right after that, Dolly collapsed and lost consciousness. Okay. Tell me why the lights went out. They went out? Yes. Suddenly I couldn't see them at all. What could it mean? The red lights were coming from Gadot's mask. They went out right in the middle of the fight. Maybe the mask was damaged. Or maybe it was knocked off. Or maybe the batteries ran out. You <laughs> fucking asshole. Or maybe those little red pinhead looking lights just stopped working. <sighs> Damn it. Just in the moment there was a horrible scream. Was it a man's scream? Was it a female scream? What do you mean? Just at that moment. Do you mean the moment when the lights went out? Yes, that's right. The scream that you heard then. Was it Dolly Hawthorne? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was your mom, right? It was a man's voice. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what? He screamed like a little girl. <laughs> so then, the scream came from the killer? That's gotta be it. Hmm. I think... Dolly Hawthorne must have taken the blade and... Well, I think Dolly Hawthorne must have taken the blade and attacked the killer with it. And then the killer let out screaming pain, huh? After that, the killer stole the blade back and delivered the final blow, I guess. Well, Mr. Wright? It seems to make sense to me. Has like a reasonable deduction, but I still kind of wonder. Sounds about right. There is a contradiction! But that, in that interpretation would create an enormous contradiction. That makes sense. After all, my deductions are almost certainly never correct. <laughs> Remember the testimony that was just gave before the killer let out a scream? Maya said she had already been splattered by the victim's blood. In other words, the blade, the, uh, the blade and the staff had already been plunged into the victim. What? That's right. She couldn't have struck back with the sword that was already stuck in her body. The weapon that caused the killer to let out a scream. Must have been something other than the staff. If you're so serious about that, then don't keep us waiting any longer, Trey. There's only one thing I can think of. It could have been used as a weapon. Ellie Hawthorne had already been stabbed in the back by the staff. What could she have used to strike back at the killer? We're gonna stab you with a dagger. Naturally, the dagger the killer brought to the scene of the crime. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. The dagger was found at the crime scene, stuck into the pine tree. Yes, the detective found that. B 
beautiful reggae bastard. I love him. Yes, the detective found that this morning and brought it to me. Dolly Hawthorne struck back at the killer with this. And she managed to wound him as well. Just because he let out a scream doesn't mean that he was wounded. For all we know, the blood on the dagger could have been from the victim. Have you forgotten that the blood had already been tested? Since we learned it wasn't the victim's blood, it must be the killer's blood. The killer must have a wound somewhere on his body. Now time to show me your body body. So you're saying the blood on this dagger belongs to the killer? Exactly. The DNA analysis of the blood would prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yes, Mr. Goodell, we prove that it's your blood. Nice theory, Trey. But I was never stabbed. <laughs> Is this the end? Have I done it? Of course I haven't. He's gonna fucking flex his six pack and he's gonna be like, I was never stabbed, baby. Even he won't be able to change the results of a scientific test. Unless you're like fucking Dr. Manhattan or some shit. Let me ask you something, Trey. Let's just say that it turned out that I was the killer. Do you really think I would be stupid enough to leave evidence like that? What? Just think for a second. This dagger was found this morning by a detective and brought to me. There was already blood on it, correct? But even so, I was the one who brought this dagger here to the courtroom. Minkado <laughs> six pack has six packs. You gotta have muscles on your muscles. You gotta have muscles on your eyeballs. Well, if I really were the killer, I could have washed the blade off and then planted another person's blood on it. That's... it can't be. In any case, there's one thing I can guarantee it's right. That blood, it doesn't belong to me. Not a chance. Maya, were you stabbed? In any, uh, in any event, it seems to be established that the killer was wounded. I mean, I mean, come on. I still find it, hmm. We never ran, well, because no one really knew about this, we never ran, ran any tests on it. There's a possibility that Godot, she did have that meeting with Godot. And she's like, yeah, fucking came flying with the goddamn cane sword on her back. So, hmm. It's not the victim's blood. Ah, ah, okay, I'm really trying to, all right. All right then, witness, continue your testimony. Fuck, wait a goddamn minute. What's the problem? I know I probably shouldn't say this, but there's a big contradiction in Nick's explanation. Come on, Maya, what the fuck? This dagger. You said that it wounded the killer? That's right. But, but, this Godot had really been cut with, this Godot had really been cut with the dagger. His clothes should be bloody and have ripping them, right? wearing different clothes. What the fuck, Maya? Uh, Maya. Maybe he just changed his clothes. That solved the contradiction pretty easily. What are you talking about? Not that simple at all. Remember back to the day of the murder? Everyone that was on the inner temple side got trapped there. Oh, that's right. And, and once the bridge was fixed and the police headed for the inner temple, Mr. Doe was already there, waiting for them. Of course he's fucking smiling at me in a goddamn flashback. He never had a chance to change his clothes. Didn't he go to get Iris? Wasn't he the one who brought Iris? Am I wrong about that? Or was that Edward? Well, maybe he brought a change of clothes with him. That was Edward? Okay. No one could have... No one could have predicted the light striking through... Uh, blah, 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 blah. No one could have predicted the lightning striking 
uh, striking that shut down the bridge. Why would anyone have brought a change of clothes? Did the judge take a smart pill during the last recess? Fucking asshole. Well, then maybe the killer took off his clothes before he committed the murder. And he went at Rambo style. That's why he went, that way he wouldn't get blood on him either. That's impossible, Trey. You know how cold it gets up there late at night? I don't know, adrenaline's a hell of a drug, man. You're out there being a fucking predator and shit. <laughs> After a few minutes with no clothes on, you'll be frozen solid. Or your nipples will be hard enough to cut glass. <laughs> so that's all you got. I knew you weren't tough enough to finish this. Right now, me and Faye were here. If Mia Faye were here, she would have chose she would have closed the book on this case already. Mia Faye were here. Come on, try it. Can you do it or not? How about it, Mr. Wright? You accused Mr. Godon of being a killer. But but can you prove it? Have you done even what have done? Have you even got one piece of evidence? Not even a one piece? The question isn't whether I can prove it or not. The fact is, I have to prove it. That's the only choice I have. I was taught that it's one of the rules of being a lawyer. I can prove it. You're damn right I can. If I keep saving and reloading, I'll get there one day. I'm gonna bring your magnificent vengeance to a fruition, just as you want it. That's good. The fighter to the bitter, I'll try. Since there's just one piece of evidence that can prove your point. Why don't we go far... Wait, what? Why don't we go for the ultimate penalty? Wow, that would be really amazing and pretty epic if you ever recovered any of my fucking health, but you never do! Because it doesn't matter to me. I got the one piece of evidence I need. Give me a break. You got nothing, right? So, what do I do at a time like this? It's simple. I gotta think outside the box and approach from a different angle. All right, then, Mr. Right. Let's hear what you got. I'm gonna fuck this up royally. This is gonna be great. This is gonna be fucking amazing. There's one thing I get, one thing I've demonstrated in this previous cross examination. The killer was wounded. That was proven by the blood on the dagger. But we decided that it was impossible for him to have hidden such a wound. If he had been cut by a dagger, it should have been blood stain on his clothes. There's one place, one place the, uh, the killer could have hidden his wound. On his fucking face. Hidden. This is it. My last stand. I need to think about this from a defense and from a different angle. I don't need to think about why there was no blood stains on his clothing. I need to show how he hit the wall. And the end of it's the end of the line. The final stops, right? Let's hear what you got. I got nothing. Where is the look <laughs> where eh? Where's this location where you say the killer hit his wound? Uh, the location, right? Yeah, it's about that. <laughs> Phoenix has a JoJo stand. I'm not gonna lie, I was totally thinking about fucking JoJo when I was doing it. Phoenix is sitting there, fucking. Listen, Godot's basically fucking Dio. Phoenix right now is on his final emblem splash. Where could you hide that shit? Oh, wings. Oh, oh, oh. Where's this location where you're saying you are hiding his wing? Yeah, 
Let's see, about that. Put the wings. Put the... <sighs> totally not gonna get this. Where's this location where you say the killer hit his wall? How the fuck does this even work? <laughs> no. On the back? If I use this, would it be like, oh, you got stabbed in the back? That can't be right with that. <laughs> that'd be some, that'd be some fucking shit going on right there. Pretty sure it's not a, pretty sure it's not a person. Wouldn't it be on Goodell? Yeah, I just... It's like... Fucking... <laughs> Don't overthink it. I mean, like, hey. Where would he hide it from himself? Huh. Don't think you're talking me. Frankly, I don't need to know. You'll never be as half of where she was. Isn't that right, Trite? What was that just now? Mia? It can't be. You're living on through him? You're damn right. Even as we speak, you're still hiding the wound. So is it... Is it under his mask? Because... Beneath your mat. Yeah, okay, so yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I said. So, in my mind, I was fucking his stand. In my mind, I was, I was getting ready for them to give me a finger to point on his body, and I was gonna point at his mask. But they were like, "Nope, here's the evidence." And it's like, "What the fuck?" During the fight, the red lights given off by the killer suddenly disappeared. Seconds later, the killer let out a scream. That's right, your mask went flying off your face. Mr. Goodell, would you mind removing your mask? Will you have a dagger wound underneath there somewhere? Then I say this whole case is solved. That was a weird way for me to present that answer. He should have just gave me like a hand and I just would have clicked on his mask. Oh my god, do I want to become Twitch famous? That's crazy. Get big follows at bigfollows.com. Yay. Take off it. Take it off. Take it off, you sexy man. Just now. I saw her spirit in you. Hmm? I never liked you. Yeah, I never liked your ass either. <laughs> Six years ago. You helped the woman who put me to sleep by hiding her bottle of poison. And then. While I was sleeping, you let me a die. I didn't do that. That's not how that happened. But you didn't care. You just kept living your pathetic, happy-go-lucky life. Oh, man, I was pretty sad about it. You even had the nerve, to, the nerve to follow in her footsteps as a lawyer. I was already doing that before she died. I could never forgive you. That's what I thought. Mr. Goodell. But I was wrong about you. I knew from the very beginning. The truth is, the only person I could ever find in my heart to forgive... was me. <laughs> Yourself? I was the one I was totally expecting him to say himself, too. It's not a surprise to me. I was the one that failed to protect Mia. Me and no one else. 
I tried to divert my eyes from the truth, escape from the harshness of reality. It just couldn't face me as death head on, so I ran. I hid behind a mask, I threw away my true name. I couldn't even deal with being a defense attorney anymore, so I quit. But you saved Maya. Yeah, that was my plan. Up until just now, anyways. What do you mean? Are you listening, Maya? If I had really wanted to save you, then there's one person that I could have gone and talked to right away. Who would that be? You talking about Nick? But I didn't do it. I tried to get the help of Iris and your mother. But I closed my eyes to the most important man involved. Do you know why? The real reason? No. Why? I suppose... I wasn't really interested in saving you at all. Huh? I think I just was trying to salvage what was left of my own broken soul. I was trying to make up for the fact that I couldn't save Mia. Nothing more. That's why I let you walk right into a situation that I knew was dangerous. Forgive me. You're wrong. Put your life on the line to save Maya. Was it really for Maya's sake? Even I'm not really sure. What do you mean by that? I love how the judge is just the ultimate fucking fourth wheel here. That night in the darkness of the garden, when I saw her silhouette, a part of me must have known the truth. The truth that it wasn't really Dahlia Hawthorne standing right there in front of me. It could have been Misty Fay, or even the little girl. But I still picked on I still picked up the blade. It's like I was dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what was going on in my mind at that point. He was Hey! Let's take Oh my god. Whoa. Hold up, Godot. Listen, I love you, but at the same time, my man just completely said, Yeah, I was ready to kill a nine year old. <laughs> He's like, I was I didn't give a was I really motivated by pure desire to protect my FA? Or was it something else? What if my hatred for a woman who had stolen everything from me six years earlier could have been simple desire for revenge? And now, I don't know anything anymore. I did learn something today, however. When I realized that I was the arrogant one, I, ju I was just chasing an illusion of a fantasy. The stupid fantasy of defeating you in this courtroom. You were the one who made me realize my folly. You never ran away from me as death. Instead, you picked up where she left off, as a true defender of the people. that one moment, I understood everything. Mr. Godot? I think you already know this, but if you don't, my name is Diego Armando. Oh, Mr. Armando. I believe in you. I know you were trying to save me. Thanks. Your wound. It's bleeding. Did you forget already? In my world, the color red doesn't exist. These must be my tears. Tears. Ever since I woke up from my coma, I think I've been waiting for this very moment. Mr. Armando? You do well to remember this, Maya. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. This time, it really is all over, isn't it? Defendant? Yes, Your Honor. Although you weren't directly involved in the murder, Tampering with the body in the crime scene is a serious offense in itself. 
I understand, Your Honor. Mr. Romano explained that to me very carefully. I knew the risk, and I'm willing to cooperate anyways. Very well. Before I hand down my verdict, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, there is one thing. I'd like to say something to Mr. Wright. I want to apologize to you. Apologize to me? For what? For the case five years ago. Of course. I just remembered. Weren't you poisoned by your own lover? Not exactly, but yeah, some like that. Even now, five years later, I can hardly believe it. She was going to do it. She was planning to kill me. It's not all that surprising. The two of you, you hardly knew each other. Huh? What do you mean? You and my sister. You only met twice. Oh, come the fuck on! <laughs> come on, man! We only met twice? Are you telling me all the dates and shit that actually happened? The first time we met was on the fateful day. And the second time was when she tried to electrocute your ass. <laughs> The day she poisoned Mr. Armando in the cafeteria of this very courthouse. The next time you met her was eight months later. And she said, I'm here for my child support, bitch. <laughs> you met her again on the day she stole your cold medicine. And Doug Swallow was killed. No way. Can't be true. I mean, during our whole relationship, we were... For those eight months... The woman that you thought was Dahlia Hawthorne wasn't uh, actually my sister. Huh? It wasn't Dahlia? I hope one day you can forgive me, Feeny. I hate everybody. I hate everybody in this courthouse right now. Fuck you, fuck the judge, fuck Maya, fuck Mia, fuck her ghost, fuck the demons. Pearl's hiding somewhere. Edgeworth's watching on his TV on his jet or something. And go burn in hell. That's right. I lied to you. For eight months. But why? Why would you do such a thing? Ever since she gave you the bottle that day, my sister was trying to get it back as soon as she possibly could. Because of the police investigation and their surveillance, she couldn't move about freely. So that's why you... My sister, from the beginning, she was prepared for the worst. Prepared for the worst. She thought that you might somehow discover the truth. That's why she was always ready to deal with you at a moment's notice. You fucking... Whoa! You... You guardian angeled me for eight months? <laughs> what? You mean she was ready to kill me? She already had so much answers... <laughs> You already had so much to answer for. I didn't want any more sins on her soul. I begged her not to do it, and she agreed to give me a chance. And that's why you came to me. You came to get the bottle pendant back from me in her place. But I couldn't get you to give it back. I feel that's something even as simple as that. Eight months passed, and I still couldn't get it back from you. Finally, my sister couldn't wait any longer. Oh my fucking god! She didn't consult me about... Listen, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be 100% honest. I love Godot. He's great. But after fucking two games of like wishy-washy shit, you kind of get used to it towards the end and you're like, okay, I get it. We've been through this, right? So in my mind, I was thinking of what my top three trials were. And case four of the first game in this case... We're tying neck and neck for first. Case four was up there. But now this shit happens right here. Bombshell. Bam. 
this is my favorite case. I like this. <laughs> and of course, my third favorite has to be uh, the one at the Big Berry Circus. I really like that one. She didn't console me about her plans for you that day. It was the first time that ever happened. That, that was a bit strange, wasn't it? Dude, I'm sitting here, I was like, there's no way that Iris, who just met me, can just go like, I love you, Phoenix. And he's like, nah, she was there. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Up until the day you two were partners in crime. And she would, she would confer with you? I think she must have noticed. Noticed what? My feelings for you? Fucking hell. If I had found out she, she was planning to kill you, I would have done whatever was necessary to stop her. You were gonna kill your sister for me? <laughs> Even if it meant her life. You're fucking crazy! <laughs> Love you! <laughs> Iris? After spending those eight months by your side, my feelings towards you, they changed. I have something to say to you, too. Yes? You really are the person I always thought you were. Even after Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, I still believed in you. What the fuck you smiling at? <laughs> Fucking asshole. How many cups of darkness have I drank over the years? Even I don't know. I'll tell you though. Right now, this one here is the greatest cup I think I ever had. Don't you think so? Phoenix Fright, you damn right. You damn right, that's my name. Look at this shit, drink it down. Yeah, I think you're right. The purpose of this trial was to rule on the murder of the victim, at least. At some point, I expect you, you will be trying for your role as an accomplice in this case. I understand, Your Honor. Oh, God, she was willing to kill for her. She really kill her sister. Oh, fuck. Guess she ain't that different, but it's awesome. <laughs> Fucking metal as shit. I love her. Very well. On the charge of murder, I hereby find the defendant. Not guilty. <laughs> oh my god. Fucking awesome. Court is now adjourned. I'm assuming she still has to be holding detention for her for her future trial, right? So I guess it's all over. The way Phoenix, you better fucking visit her every goddamn day. The way everything ended was just this. Was justice really served? The man who risked his life to save Maya is being sent to prison by my own hand. Of course justice was served. Mia! I'm proud of you, Phoenix. Your defense was truly brilliant. But I couldn't save Mr. Armando. The man who, the man who cared so deeply for you. You're wrong, Phoenix. You did save Diego. You saved him in the only way possible. You mean, with the verdict? I think one day you'll understand, too. Phoenix, I want you to remember one thing. You were as good out there today as any defense attorney could ever hope to be. There's nothing more you can learn from me. Yeah. You've accomplished something I wasn't able to do. I owe you a great deal. Thank you. I'm sure we'll meet again. Someday, Phoenix. I've handled lots of cases and seen a lot of things. But along this journey, I found myself asking just one question. What does it really mean to defend someone? And I suppose today's case produced one possible answer. Nick! Maya! Maya, move the fuck aside. You're the little sister character now. I got a perfect wife over there. <laughs> I guess it's just like my sis said. Mia? What'd you say? That night, when I channeled Mia to get her advice on what to do, this is what she wrote back in my notebook. Don't worry. Phoenix will save everyone in the end. 
Come on, cut it out with the gloomy face. Can't you see? Me, sis, and I'm sure Iris too. We owe you for everything you've done for us, Nick. Maya? How can you be so bright and chipped after all what after all that happened? You were brutally attacked. You even saw your mother murdered. What the fuck? Still salty as always, Phoenix Wright. Oh, you're just mad because I found the love of my life. Move aside! <laughs> you too, Edgeworth. Get out of my way! Mr. Edgeworth, when did you get back? Oh, that's right. I guess no one filled her in on that. Edgeworth and Francesca have been helping me. Helping you? But these two hadn't been here on the first day of the trial. The defense wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Wow. But where were you, Nick? I heard he fell into a river and caught a nasty cold, which forced him to sleep all day. Yes, he laid in bed, shivering from his fever with Iris's hood pulled over his head. Ouch. Talk about embarrassing, Nick. You definitely need more training. Anyways, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. And you too. Um, Francesca? I don't suppose. Where is he? Oh, I thought that was gonna be Gumshoe. Fucking Larry, you son of a bitch, get over here. There's room for me in this group hug, is there? Oh, Larry. What's with the, uh, long face? I realized something when I was reborn. I realized that Larry was never of any use to anyone, not even, not even once. That's not true, right, Nick? What? You asking me? Well, Nick, is it true? I got a place in this world, right? Yeah. And yeah, you know, fuck up. <laughs> but you're my fuck up. I knew it. Everyone would be better off if I were gone for good. We love you, Larry. Get over here. No, no, no. Right. Oh, yeah. The sports you paid. They were really good. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Don't you fucking Edgeworth. Me? So why are you talking to me? Why are you making that face, huh, Angie? Oh, well. Yeah, indeed. I certainly can't say that they lacked <laughs> resemblance. Do you really mean it? What about you, Franzi? Did I draw you? Did I draw you well too? Ah! My beauty can't possibly be captured by a mere crayon. Strike fear into her heart. Nevertheless, I recognize the effort you put in it, and it's worth something. So then, you'll t you'll do it, like you promised. You're gonna model for my next picture book. Don't get carried away now. Is that uh uh? <laughs> Larry is Mother's Nature's Nature's greatest mistake. Uh, Mother Nature sneezes while creating him. Oh man, fuck. Well, how about the, how about that? I guess painting porches is the only thing I'm good at. The paintings of Pearl was pretty darn good, too, if you ask me. Huh? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her around. Pearls? Where, where the hell she go? Normally, she have made a beeline for Maya. I'll go look for her. I'll be right back. Hey, Pearly. Right? You seem to be uncareless. I, eh. Uncharacteristically puzzled. I suspect you were wondering how Maya could be so cheerful despite all that's happened. Yeah? To be honest, I can't understand it either. Well, that's because you have no feelings, and that's why we love you. That's right. She lost her father fairly recently as well. I think I understand how she feels. Maya is a much wiser person than she appears. And I think <laughs> the moment he says that, she's like, Hey, guys, check out how many hamburgers they got out here. <laughs> and we're like, aren't you looking for Pearl? <laughs> I think she realizes something. Now's exactly the time when she needs to be the str str be, eh, needs to be as strong as she can. What do you mean by now is the exact time? Maya wasn't the only one that was badly wounded by this incident. In fact, there was someone that was hurt far more deeply than she. I believe it's for the person that Maya's trying her best not to cry. You talking about me? 
someone. Or Pearl. Because, you know, her mom's a fucking evil witch. Edgeworth. I think I'm starting to understand, too. Tell me, Phoenix. Who my FA is being strong for? I knew you were going to fucking do that shit. I mean, that's why I saved it. You're doing it for Pearl. Pearl Fay. The poor kid, after all. The reasons that she worked so hard to follow the instructions was because she loved and believed in her mother, Morgan. It's for the good of the Fay clan. I'm sure she believed in every last word. She thought she was doing it for Maya. Why she was so happy. Showed how truly devoted she is to Maya. But it's a cruel irony that it was her exuberance that led to this tragedy. Maya Faye's mother was killed and Mia herself was put into... Did I just say Mia? Fuck. And Maya herself was put into the deepest pearl imaginable. And that's exactly why Maya is putting on a brave face. She's doing it for Pearl's sake. Until she can find her smile again. Eh. Totally fucked it up. Hey, it's Gumshoe. I was missing you, buddy. Oh, hey. <laughs> so, this is where you all were. Wow, looks like we got quite a bunch here. What was that for? Sorry about that, Scruffy. My web just seems to have a mind of its own. What's up, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, you know, this and that. Anyways, congrats on your win. Let's go out to dinner, pal. Dinner's on me. You're too broke. Stop. Stop. There's too many people here. My mother's a bitch. Her sister's a demon. And the other one's is accomplice to murder. I think the term you mean is angel? <laughs> My salary just sort of kind of goes down by a teeny weeny bit. But it's all right. I made reservations at a first-class French restaurant. Way to go work, Scruffy. That whip was your reward. You're a fucking freak and I love you. Detective Gumshoe. What's that first-class French restaurant? You don't mean... Good SVN. Oh, go fuck yourself. I knew it. We're doomed. Come on, let's go, everyone. Can't keep Maggie waiting. Oh, you guys made up. That's awesome. You, crybaby. You're invited too. Oh, forget about me. Rose and I will be at the Loser Shack eating potatoes. You know, I've taken an awful long time to get back. She's still out looking for pearls. Oh, Maya. What's wrong? Nick, what do I do? Really, I can't find her anywhere. Huh? I bet she just went back home, that's all. I thought so too, so I called the village. But no one has heard from her. It's never happened before. What the fuck happened, Phoenix? She literally was in front of you as Mia, and then you... What'd you do, blink, and she just fucking teleported away? <laughs> what the fuck? As I figured, she's been badly hurt by this incident. She feels responsible for the tragedy that's befallen you, Maya. But, none of it was her fault. What should I do? Detective Gumshoe? Yep. What is it, pal? Because you guys go on ahead. But what about you? Maya and I will... I'll join you guys once we find pearls. Nick? Don't worry about us, Detective Gumshoe. We may be a little late, but we'll definitely be there. We have a lot of celebrating to do tonight. And I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah, but you're the... Very well, Phoenix, right? We'll go on ahead. Don't keep us waiting, right? We won't. But where should we go? Look. Where could Pearl have gone? I don't know. Fucking... I feel like you're gonna make me choose some weird answer or some shit. I'm gonna save it. Let's go, Maya. There's only one place I can think that Pearls might have gone to. Akura Temple. For Pearls, I bet this is a very important place. After all, it's where this whole incident started. What's this? You're all back again so soon. Sister Begani? 
I thought we'd be eating mashed potatoes alone tonight. So she's here. Probably see her? She's in the training hall. Why don't you hurry along and go see her? Okay. Girl's not here. Huh. Maya? The hanging scroll. Someone cleaned it off. It's gotta be pearls. Mystic Maya? Pearly? Why... Why did you just leave like that? Mystic Maya? <laughs> Aww. Aww, you little demon. We love you. I swore. I swore that I would never trouble the two of you ever again. Because it's all my fault that Mystic Maya's mother's... That's a mouthful. That's why you came here. It's the least I could do. Pray for your happiness. You don't have to do that, Burley. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Of course, I'm sad that my mother's gone. But how do I say this? I'm still happy. You don't have to lie just to be just to make me feel better. No, really. It's true. The only reason I'm still here. At all, thanks to everyone who was there for me. My sis, my mother, Mr. Armando, Nick, and you. If even one of you weren't there, I'm sure I wouldn't still be alive right now. That's why I have to be strong. For all the people that were there for me when I needed them. That's all I can really do. Mystic Maya. I'm impressed. You truly are the daughter of Mystic Misty. Mr. Bikini! <gasps> Your mother, Mystic Maya, was a strong woman indeed. I want to tell you what she said to me that night. After dishonoring the good name of Kirin, I don't have the right to face my own daughter. But still, Maya's always in my thoughts. It's true. She's always been with me until the day I die. We need an angel tier list. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Alright. Your spirit was with her. Uh, that's why your mother was so strong. Even in the end, I'm sure she had no regrets. She'll always be with me. Till the day I die. Huh? There's a rule or something all masters are to follow, isn't there? You never take the charm off until the day you die. That's... That's the master's talisman. The thing that Misty kept by her heart, it would never take off. It wasn't the container that was important, rather it was the contents. A photo? It's only natural for living creatures to fight to protect their own lives. But what makes us humans is that we fight for others. But who do you fight for? How hard must you fight? That's the true measures of what human life is worth. We, defended, we defense attorneys are warriors who are constantly challenged by the question. You guys fucked it up too? <laughs> What? Oh! <laughs> it runs in the family. Everyone just fucking up grandma's ashes. God damn it. Even when the battle is over and the bonds that and the bonds that connect us are severed, we always return time and time again. Mia, Maya, Pearls, Mr. Armando. And Maya's mother too. I learned that from all of them. Well, shall we get going? Everyone's waiting. This is a day to remember. A day when a lot of things were finally put to rest. I think we should celebrate what we've overcome today. But I still can't. Oh, go on, sweetie. You can come back for training anytime. Okay. Alright. I'm 
gonna make a brand new start, too. Mr. Bikini, I'll be back for more training, I promise. I know, and I won't go easy on you just because you're the future master. I'll make sure to prepare reservations for the three of you when you come back. The three of us? Who said I want to come back? All right, we're gonna have a great feast today, Burley. You know why? Because training is a battle of endurance. Okay, Mystic Maya. I'll eat lots and lots of food tonight. You know, there's one thing I don't get, and probably don't want to, but... What is it, Nick? Reservations for a training is fine and all. But why for three? Come on, what do you think? You're one of us, Nick. Next time, you can train right alongside us. But only the women get powers! I'm gonna get nothing. I'll be waiting for you. Mr. Kenny will take special care of you. Huh? It'll be great, Nick. You're gonna do the special course naturally. That's a great idea. After all, Mr. Nick, you'd do anything for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you? Even walk on hot coals, right? Pearls, don't you play that on me. We'll have a nice big meal before we come back next time, right, Nick? You know, I was wondering if I can just say one little thing. Sure, of course you can. Oh, I love this part. I can't wait to hear it. I'm getting goosebumps, too. Well then, here goes nothing. Objection! And that is the end of the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Really have to work extra hard now. Master with Karain and the office manager of Wright and Co. Law Office. And I have the good big sister of Pearly and Nick too. Well, as long as I'm not locked up or captured or anything like that. You know, the usual. Ah, <laughs> uh, God, this is a good series. So it's true, Mr. Nick. Really, Mr. Meyer's knight in shining armor. He went through with the special course all the way to the end. Actually, I heard there's a legendary extra special ultra course here too. I think I'll surprise the two of them by making them a secret reservation. You fucking demon. Monster. Oh, uh, fuck. Gumshoe, what are you doing? He's wearing a different coat. Maggie bought me a brand. Wait, what? Sturdy, shabby overcoat is just more detective flesher. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my place. I got, I got sidetracked for a bit. Isn't that his old? I mean, it's not. His, it's a new coat she bought him, but isn't it the old one he used to wear? Isn't it the same color and shit? Oh my god! Andrews! Mr. Wright, what's good? Thanks to you, the treasures of Kyrian exhibit is great success. I even get to see Miss Von Karma, who I haven't seen in almost a year. She taught me how to use a whip, and she- Oh fucking god. Dude, I'm kind of a little saddened. There was no lot of heart in this game. In the third one. Come on. Oh, here's this motherfucker. Desiree, I started a company called Mass to Mass Consulting. We're dedicated to stopping the evil plans of all the criminals in the city. Our motto is cut it out, please. Cut it out, please. Ready, please? Well, I was planning to sell the criminals as kind of side business. I wonder if that's okay. Sometimes, I think we're the, <laughs> we're the worst criminals. What? They're getting to the slave trade? What the hell is that about? Uh, he feels 10 years younger. Viola, I love you. I'll show my appreciation to right. So I lend him what? In a tea set. Special special thick tea. What I mix with my own two hands. I bet he's drinking it somehow. Went through compromise. Huh. I gotta say I do like Viola. Mainly because I'm just a weirdo and I like creepy girls. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good goth girl once in a while? I'm just old and in the way. A wrinkly, grumpy clown. At least, that's what I thought. But my grandkids had a birthday party for me the other day. Talk about embarrassing. 69. Nice! Fucking nice!
Oh, this fucking robot lady. As usual, we have an abundance of work to do. We hired a new programmer to replace Glenn. I do hope everyone will get along. His name is Adam... Adam Mata. What? Is it supposed to, is it supposed to go like Automata? Is that what that's supposed to be? My, 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 more reporters. Since the murders, we've made much money. I hardly know what to do. I think the magazines like us because I provide such a nice visual, especially in spring. I can hardly wait for Iris to come back. Come on, show me Iris. I need to know. Is his name reflected? Oh, okay. Yeah! Turns to such a respectable man, Feeney. It was so sweet of you and everyone else to come and visit me here the other day. Of course, I was happy that you constantly had your eyes on me. I felt kind of bad when the little one slapped you so hard you got a nosebleed. <laughs> oh, shit. She said, no! You don't do that. I love how the song just goes into Maya's fucking theme. God. I like Mia with the bang. She's pretty cool. <laughs> She's pretty cool. Uh, you can't stop true love pearls. I wish they would give me like, you know, something with Godot at the end. Like, is he... I'm assuming he didn't get, like, you know, the death penalty or anything. Not a fucking... It wasn't, like, cold blood murder. The fuck you getting goddamn credit for it? Well, I mean, of course, the, the voice actor. But fuck you! <laughs> I knew it! What's this? I'm back for a long entire vacation and no one's here to greet me. I guess while I was gone, my little whippersnapper buddy quit. <laughs> She's gonna go off the fucking rails again. I feel like some sort of space alien. Now I'm gonna do it all of this macadamias. Bring over edgy, what? Find a gentleman who will something something? I couldn't even read it that fast. I was expecting her to show up during that trial. You know. But she didn't. Finally found something I love to do. Ramsey's whippity whip trip is gonna turn the art world on its head. To realize it sooner, self self centered, lazy. <laughs> I'm an artist, a really good portrait artist, not a loser at all. Yeah, keep thinking that, buddy. Keep thinking that shit. Shinji Mikami, he was a producer on this. Aww, adorable. I love how they excluded Larry. <laughs> Aww, and they're watching over them. <laughs> All right, he can actually draw. He can fucking draw. I didn't, I didn't. Everybody was... Call him out on his drawing. I thought it was pretty good, right? Even if he was like an amateur, supposedly. But that was Phoenix Wright, Trials and Tribulations. <coughs> but now, uh, as always, at some point, I'm gonna take all the streams of Trials and Tribulations, throw them up on YouTube, and if you wanna watch me go through the other two Phoenix Wright games, those are on YouTube already as well. So that's the first one, and then it's Justice for All. Fucking, uh, out of all this shit, uh, I said it earlier, my favorite trials is Big Berry Circus, the fourth one from, uh, the first game, and now this one is my fifth case here, it's my favorite trial, it's pretty fucking long, um, it's really goddamn good, oh god, and, you know what was, what was really weird is that, fucking, when I finished, when I finished uh, Justice for All, and I knew I was gonna continue on with um, uh, you know, Troubles and Tribulations, 
fucking troubles <laughs> trials and tribulations like there was a part of me that was like man i'm really gonna miss this i'm gonna miss this world and everything like that and i knew there were future games but i just didn't want it to end honestly i can just never touch a fucking phoenix Wright game ever again this would be a perfect ending i feel satisfied now we all know that's not gonna happen because the grace of ace attorney is coming out and then there's also apollo justice and other bullshit that's on the 3ds so i'm happy that great ace attorney is coming out because then i don't have to roll the dice on whether i'm gonna do the 3ds games or not but uh quick thoughts on alia i'm gonna keep calling him Gadot because i just i'm gonna keep calling him Gadot because i just like the way it sounds to me uh dahlia i'm in listen lovely right she's a bitch <laughs> she's a bitch um there is I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it up again i'm gonna bring up dangarampa again. there is a character in dangarampa that is just an evil bitch and at the end of everything like at the first game and then the second game and stuff like that at the end of the first and second games i'm like man this is a really good villain i like this villain this is a cool villain and then later on you play more games and you learn more about the shit they did and then you honestly begin to like really hate them instead of you just going like this person's a good villain you just end up going oh no i fucking hate this person still a good villain but instead of being like yeah you're a cool villain i'm like no go fuck yourself uh dolly is not quite at that level for me because you know it's only it's only a one-time thing it's not like an overarching thing but in terms of story uh, how it's like been written and stuff like that that it may not have been an overarching thing for me but it has been for the characters involved and you get a glimpse of that in the past and all that bullshit it's pretty good I like it I really like overarching stories and stuff like that and it's nice that you know they splice things here and there throughout the game to kind of help you kind of help you like combine it all at the end you know what I mean Hajime Ippo style but um one thing I have to say and it's really it's really a problem with the second and the third game. I just wish they were a little bit more descriptive with, with their fucking evidence shit. Sometimes, sometimes there are things that you need to know about the evidence that they don't outright tell you, right? Three was definitely way better than how two was. Two was really bad with that shit. It was kind of annoying. Um, fucking wish that wish that you can recover health whenever you got an answer right in the trial because if they did that for the psychic locks then why the fuck didn't they do that for the trial answers but um you know there's that uh sometimes three had a bit of goofy moments where i think i think it was mostly mostly at those moments it was mostly me overthinking it sometimes it was right sometimes it was wrong overall it wasn't it wasn't a bad experience though definitely loved it now, when it comes to Kadot, oh, Kadot, we love you. Amazing. Sweet jazz. Love you, baby. Um, but there are some, there are some times where it's like, Kadot, I love you, but you're really just like, you're really just like, really up my ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's his problem in his writing, right? He admits it in the end, and that's cool. Like how he always said, it's your fault me is dead. And I'm like, not my fault. I wasn't there, didn't even know she was working on that case, did everything behind my back, and she died. <laughs> but at the end, he's like, well, it wasn't your fault. You know, it's just me taking out my anger on you or whatever. Uh, I wish they gave closure on him during the credit scenes. That would have been fun, but maybe it's left to be open. You know? Maybe, maybe, just in case they're like, you know, touching the waters, they're like, well, we want to test it out. See if we want to bring back Edgeworth or Francesca or do a new character or bring back a dot again. Maybe he'll come back for another reason. Or maybe it'll just be a side character later on. Right? <laughs> His writing was really good. It was good. I liked it. Um, best one in the first, second. What's the worst? Yeah. You think the first game is the best one? First one was really really easy to get into i'm trying to think uh there were some oh i guess the first one yeah i love trial and tribulations but at this point you kind of expect it right for them to do crazy things but your first time 
for like my first time going through this stuff. Your first time on like the first game when like with with like the Silver Samurai case, right? Like that one where the fucking mob just shows up and you're like, whoa, hold up. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, you guys are ready to kill me for this shit? I ain't signed up for this. Dude's just wearing a fucking samurai costume. Okay. Right? Um fucking again Edgeworth's trial and then the the fifth one the fifth one was with Lana Sky in them, right? And that was added for the DS version and also put in here. That was pretty that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, but Huh. I'm trying to think. It's pretty cool, but it wasn't it wasn't I don't know, man. <laughs> it was pretty cool, but it wasn't nothing that made me really go, "Oh shit," right? It was like, "Yeah, okay. It's pretty nice. I liked it." Um fucking I hope to see Lana Sky and her fucking uh sister later in the future. The first one is in the middle. What the hell do you mean by that? What do you mean the first one, though? <laughs> the first one is the second best because fucking Justice for All is the worst one. I don't think Justice for All is the worst one. What was the trials for Justice for All? Well, now that we're here, we can fucking look real quick. It's been, again, it's been like months in the making of me playing this shit. Uh... Would it be under a new game? I actually want to remember what this was. Uh, okay, we started with Maggie. Is this when he lost his memory, or is that this game? I think this is when he lost his memory, right? Okay, and then we meet up with the characters, and then Edgeworth's whole thing. I don't know, I like the ending trial in, in this one, and I like I liked everything with Francesca. I really liked her. <laughs> right? She's definitely a lot of good characters here. A lot of fucking fantastic characters. By the way, Breezy, if you can, please color out, uh, please add color to that gumshoe picture, because I really want to, I really want to keep it. <laughs> I love it. It's really good everything I want right um yeah and then Iris gotta give it up for Iris man <laughs> like you sit here and like you're learning about everything with Dolly and shit and you're like oh my god I hate this bitch how dare she it's like so what she's a killer whatever we can't get over that love will conquer all and then she's like I fucking hate you and you're like <gasps> my heart and she fucking ruins it. Right? <laughs> and then later on, you find out, well, all the good times, it was Iris. Right? You know, first time I see Iris, she's all like, oh my god, it's Phoenix. And I'm like, I'm like, ain't no way. I'm like, ain't no way this girl loves me just by the first time we met each other. And it's like, nope. <laughs> That's why I even said it where she's like, I got something to tell you, Phoenix. And I'm like, yeah, it's not gonna be the words I love in you, right? Because fucking, because we just met. And it's like, nope, it was me the whole time. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure if it was Phoenix being for real or just bullshit, but he's like, you know what? You know, I, I feel you, <laughs> right? Listen, if a cute girl goes like, I loved you the whole entire time, and you're like, you know what? I ain't gonna argue that. <laughs> I was willing to date a murderer. I was willing to die for her, even though she was killing me. Fucking. And then she goes like, listen, knew my sister was gonna kill you. If I knew, I would choke that bitch out. It would have been over. We would have lived happily ever after. And I'm like, wow, you're kind of a psychopath, but you're pretty hot. <laughs> you're a hot psychopath. <laughs> I love you. She's crazy for me. Crazily in love. And of course, Love Maya. Love Maya to death. Love Maya, the pearls. I just want to hug them and squeeze them. They're my family. I want, I want fucking, I wish not everyone in this game was broke all the damn time. Because <laughs> then fucking you would, uh, 
you would all be able to Phoenix would be like you know what I got money now let's fucking let's buy a house and we can all live in it we're a family right a part of me in the first two games I'm like especially when Pearl shows up I'm like oh my god does Phoenix and Maya like each other but like the more time you spend with them you're like you know what I'm cool with them being family <laughs> I'm cool with them just like you know being that uh, Phoenix believed that Dahlia so much in the first case all because of Iris exactly right you hate Francesca why I love her and her whip and her kinkiness because she's weird I like her because she's weird and stoic Pretty sure he believed in her even after all these years. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I believe that. I believe to him, in him. I believe when it comes to Phoenix, right, and the whole Dahlia thing. After he learned about her wicked schemes, like, of course, he had to sit there in reality, and he's like, "Fucking this bitch tried to kill me," but the whole entire time he's like. She tried to kill me, but why do I feel bad about it? So then, leads to this awesome moment of when you see Iris, and you're like, I know that girl. She tried to kill me. But instead of him just like screaming out, you fucking murderer, I'm calling the cops. He just goes like, all right, hold up. Hold up. It's gotta be an explanation for this. Why the fuck is this evil murderous bitch out in the fucking, out on the mountains? Sitting here singing fucking kumbaya and shit. <laughs> it's like, what's going on here? He said he didn't want to believe that it's not the Dahlia he knew. Exactly. And the whole entire time I'm sitting here, I'm like, you know what? I love Iris. Kind of like the red hair, right? And then she goes like, it was me the whole time, baby. I was like, so you did have the red hair. You just went back to all natural. You know what? Girl, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah. Fucking. I am way over schedule for this stream. Like, by an hour and a half. Because this trial was definitely the fucking longest one. That's for damn sure. Longer than, uh. Longer than five. Uh, not five. Why'd I say like that? Longer than case five from the first game. Because that one was pretty damn long. But, yeah, <clears throat> as always, fucking, well, before I get to my outro, gotta put some things out. Next week, um, actually starting tonight and until who knows when, fucking maybe next month, not, not this Monday coming up, but the Monday after this one coming up, maybe that's when I'll be able to stream again because I'm getting called in for the whole week for my job and fucking... Oh, it's going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> so, if no streams happen, then that's because of that. And I apologize for that. I really wish I had more time to stream. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to pull a, I'm going to put up a poll. If that's still allowed on YouTube, because they were supposed to get rid of it forever ago. But I think they're still allowed. I'm going to put up a poll on YouTube. And if not, then I'll do it on Twitter. Uh, on, um on which game that you guys would like to see me stream next because I wanna like a long time ago I played Persona 4 but I really didn't like the way it turned out because my whole setup was like unreliable and sometimes the recording would end and the, and the audio wasn't that good and all that shit so I wanna play Persona 4 Golden it's a long ass RPG I wanna play Final Fantasy 7 it's a long ass RPG as well and not just Final Fantasy 7. Once I play Final Fantasy 7, I want to play all of the Final Fantasy 7 shit. That means 7, Crisis Core, fucking Dirge of Cerberus, and, and then Remake, and then uh, Intermission, which is the PS5 stuff with Yuffie, which I have not played yet. Um, We need to do that. Return to Conception, because we didn't finish that. And, uh, you know, I'll put some other other games on there as well. But look out for that, please. And then other than that, fucking, I'm going to try, I keep saying this every stream, I'm going to try and upload all the fucking playthroughs that I have sitting in my little vault over here. 
um, because I need to do that. And of course, Phoenix Wright is one of them. Same thing with like Resident Evil 8 and Resident Evil uh, 7 and 4 and all that other wonderful goodness. And I think that is it for me. For all the fucking people who came and watched live, thank you so much for the new followers. And again, thank you so much for the raid. I greatly appreciate it. But for the new followers and stuff, again, I, my streaming schedule is fucked up. So just hop in whenever you feel like or don't. It's up to you. Um, but greatly appreciate all the support. I love talking to you guys live whenever I can, whenever I can glimpse at the chat, <laughs> right? Um, you know, and all that wonderfulness. But that's gonna be it for me tonight. So once again, for those who are live, thank you very much. For those who are watching the vods later on, thank you for watching the vods as well. Fucking that, that like it doesn't. I'm not gonna say it doesn't help out. But, you know, Twitch is all about that live shit. But, you know, it helps me because it gives me more reason to do it. Because I'm like, oh, wow, people like it. Even when I'm not live. That's cool. And then, for people on YouTube. I don't know when the fuck this playthrough comes out for you because I suck at uploading on YouTube. But, you know what? If you're here and you're watching it, thank you. Because <laughs> you did that. And that's amazing. Come and watch it live on Twitter. You'll fucking... You'll get to see it way the fuck earlier. <laughs> right? But yeah, that's it for me. I'm gonna go to sleep because I'm motherfucking tired. And, <laughs> once again, thank you guys. <laughs> Maybe in 2022. Maybe. I won't be that far. My, my fucking, my, like my, my brain, my brain won't let me do that. But, um, yeah. So, once again, Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. I'm a chef, chef too.